this regular season's finale here at the Valley before a record throng of some 63,000 were gathered to fill the new upper deck. Of course, the former existing stands and the green grass in the end zone. It's the Tigers against the Gamecocks of South Carolina, the 76th renewal of this battle between the two great state rivals. Clemson coming in with a 9-1 and record, an Atlantic Coast Conference championship, and the Gamecocks at 5-4-1 looking for redemption here this afternoon, something to make their winter a shorter and sweeter one. It should be a fine football game, one, of course, that has attracted this huge, huge crowd of people as they prepare for another great classic battle between these two great teams. Perfect football weather, temperature will be in the 50s, the size are sunny and bright. And we'll be back to talk with Coach Pell in just one minute. It's down to one Saturday afternoon to make the season right now because there's a lot of good things behind. Nine victories, an Atlantic Coast Conference championship, but all is not complete until the Tigers and the Gamecocks go at it. Jim, there's no question about that, and we mentioned to the squad again that this is a type of game that, uh, that everyone waits for. I'd like to point out, too, that this group of seniors, 25 people, this is a special game for them, and we're asking our other players to make it a special day for our seniors. They've they've probably experienced more than any other group in the nation in their four years of college football. All the emotions, the uh, ups and downs, the disappointments, the excitement, the thrills, and to end their uh, four years at Clemson with a championship year. I think today, if we could pull together and overcome all the things that we have to overcome today, I think it would be a fitting ending for a great, great four years and a great, great group of uh, senior football players. I was curious in talking with some of your seniors earlier this week, and the uppermost thing in their mind, Charlie, was the fact that they realized what this game was all about, and they were making it their goal to go around and remind the younger players, the ones who had never been associated with this game from a player's point of view. Well, it's a two-way thing, and it's a senior's responsibility that the, you know, it's their attitude, it's their it's their feelings that are so important the seniors feelings normally on a football team they are the that's the bedrock of the of a football team that's the bedrock of the emotion and uh, it, it dictates what happens and this group of seniors have been outstanding and when all said and done and all the battles uh, are replayed and all the smokes cleared I think the this group of seniors will be remembered um, you know for what they were able to accomplish and all that they had to overcome and we have a big test today and it's a shame that this group of seniors couldn't be playing in a game against somebody uh, South Carolina with them having the same emotional strain on them that we've had on us but we'll give them that advantage and we understand what we've got to do and the players understand that uh, they're what they've been shooting for for so long and been an independent school like they are uh, when they dropped out of the bowl pitch early in the year, all they had to shoot for was Clemson, and uh, that's the type of opponent we have today. All right, Charlie, let's talk a little bit about individuals. First, the Tigers, because you come off of that very emotional week of just seven days ago where you win an Atlantic Coast Conference championship, a goal that you had set out for. I thought in under the conditions when you realize that your club came from behind on three occasions on foreign soil, that's the key to what's inside of these young men. It is, Jim, and there's no doubt in my mind what's there, and uh, we're going out. We had a good week's preparation. The players worked hard, and it surprised me they were able to get back into it as quickly since they had been 
they've been uh, they experienced so much and uh, there was so much hoopla and all the things that were surrounding the championship but uh, fortunately they did have a good week's preparation but uh, if this is enough to offset South Carolina's five or six weeks preparation for the game, then we'll have an opportunity for our young men to go out in the right way. About that crowd out there, it's exciting, isn't it? Well, of course, this is Clemson, South Carolina game. There's no other rivalry in the nation. It's a shame that the other people are made more aware of what this thing is and what it means and what it means to an entire state. And it's played 365 days on every street corner regardless and... Uh, the records are thrown out the window. There have been ups, more upsets. I think about 28, 29 percent of the time the underdog is one, and that's a mighty healthy percentage. Charlie, another thing the seniors pointed out, they felt that when they stood on that hill this afternoon, which they will in a few minutes, that they would not be able to hold back the emotional outburst of tears that would come, and they were proud of this. Well, Jim, I think that that expression of emotion has got to be an indication of the type of club this year we had talked last summer as you recall that each team has its own character each team has its own characteristics and its own personality this one has taken shape in the last four weeks I think it's a very emotional ball club it's a very close-knit unit they're very close as people and I think this is uh, uh, this is a type of club that they're, they're very loose normally on Fridays Thursday and Fridays and when they come to the hill uh, top of the hill uh, I, I can understand exactly what to mean I had to choke a little bit last night in our team meeting myself when we started calling off the seniors names we'll be back to talk more with coach Pell in just one minute talk about your opposition this afternoon this is probably as strong a running game as you'll go against or have gone against all season there's no question about it and it's the most underrated team and it's a shame that the Carolina fans can't understand just how good their football team is with Wright and Rogers they have the best combination of running backs we've seen all year on film or anywhere Zion McKinney is a class player and a big league player Gary Harper's a much much better quarterback than he's given credit for he's a good quarterback and they were asking him to do a lot of things early in the season and he wasn't necessarily successful in doing all those things and and uh, but when they've got him back down to what he can do best I think everyone sees that he is a very very fine young ma athlete he's a good quarterback and uh, their offensive line is experienced they've got some red shirts on there that are listed as sophomores and juniors but they've got two and three years experience there and they keep talking about their young ball club They've got more age to them. Their big right tackle, the best offensive lineman we've seen, is a transfer, redshirt sophomore. That makes him a junior in football, Jim. And they've got a strong safety transfer from William and Mary, who's been redshirted a year for eligibility purposes. He's a year older than is listed. Uh, they've got a linebacker, Scott Wade, a transfer, who's a year older. Uh, he transferred from NC State. They've got a lot more age than the program. Uh, indicates and they've got a lot more age than they're given credit for we've talked a lot about tiger pride i think the gamecock defense has a lot of pride over the last five games they've allowed a total of 19 points in the second half of play this is something they build very strongly on well there's no doubt about that and they're a very fierce unit there's going to be a there's going to be a, a a temptation jim and i think you'll see it from the booth there's going to be a temptation to get a little bit carried away in some instances we're hoping that our players will have enough poise and enough class not to get in mouthing contests not again that silly push pushing and shoving and 
I tell you, we're going to have to have the best officiating that uh, we've had all year in order for this game to stay in, uh, in the classic that it should be. This is also the type of game, I think, that has to be played with a reckless abandon. You, you can't lay back at all on this one. There's nothing to lay back for. It's the final game of the season. It's uh, for the bragging rights for a year. And uh, the people are involved with their, their friends and their next door neighbors and their relatives. And you know, th that makes the rivalry what it is. And we're not talking about today, Jim. We're talking about when our great great granddaddies were watching, you know, uh, coming through this dead gun thing. And you're talking about in the late 1800s. That's where it all started. And it's been building every year to today, 1978, and it should be one of the one of the real fine football games in the series. We'll have a final word from Coach Pell in just one minute. can't envision that in anyone's mind. I don't even have the words to respond to that, Jim, because that's totally, totally, uh, probably the most, most mi biggest misstatement I've ever heard since I've been associated with football. The Gamecocks and the Tigers, 76th time that they'll take the field together. Charlie, it's been great to be with you over the past 11 weeks. We're certainly looking forward to another several hours of excitement out here this afternoon. I want to wish you the best of luck and tell you that, in my opinion, it's just a great job well done. Jim, we'd like to publicly express again, very sincerely, our appreciation to our football players and their families for making us so proud to be associated with this group. I'd like to also uh, pay special tribute to the people on the network, uh, radio network all over the South and that uh, really work hard to, to take Clemson football to the people. And um, it'd be mighty nice if all of Clemson folks would uh, if you get an opportunity to kind of go around to the people who sponsor these things and uh, kind of drop a hint to them saying, look, we look forward to the 1979. Appreciate you all bringing Clemson football to us. And to all the people along the network line, you've been super for us. We appreciate your loyalty and your enthusiasm. And uh, we're wired up and ready to go into battle. Thank you, Charlie, for your comments. And may the same remarks go to you because it's been a job well done. Stay tuned now for the classic as the Tigers go against the Gamecocks. This game brought to you by Schlitz. Beer makes it good. Schlitz makes it great.
different looking Death Valley and Clemson. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ken Allison. We are in just a little while. You'll be hearing Jim Phillips in the play-by-play -play description of the Clemson Tigers and the University of South Carolina Gamecocks here this afternoon under bright skies and some 60,000 or better people packed into the new Death Valley as today they're opening for the first time the 10,000 seat upper deck right above us. The folks sitting across the way on what is called the visitor side or the um, uh, just across from the home stands are seeing a view that's never before been seen and that is this huge deck above us completely packed with ardent Clemson and Carolina fans. We're going to be back here in just a few moments to talk about these two ball teams as we have more from Death Valley in just one minute. could certainly ask for no more than a beautiful weather, a huge crowd, a championship ball team going against an arch rival with nothing to lose and a lot to gain and salvage part of a pride for a season by beating this championship team on their home field and them on their way to a bowl game. What a setup. What a setup for the Tigers to have to dig down now after having come up with a couple of big wins in a row. Reach down inside and defend this thing that uh, they are calling their pride and their championship. And what a thing for the Gamecocks from South Carolina saying, well, it's been 5-4-1, we can still have a winning season. After some rough turns of the ball that could have made them and uh, put them in a much better position than they are right now, except for a play or two. And they say, well, today is the day that we can reach down inside us and pull out something and salvage this season and show those Tigers something. This series, of course, started back in 1896, and the Gamecocks won it 12-6. Since that time, Clemson has 43 wins. The Gamecocks, 29. There have been three ties. The last Clemson win, of course, came last year, 31-27. We won't go into a great deal about that. It's just the fact that Clemson looked like they were going to run away with it. Came, uh, the Gamecocks came storming back, took a lead, and then the famous, what's been called the Butler catch, came with a minute and 47 to go to put the Tigers into the Gator Bowl last year. The last time there was a tie in this game was 14-14 in 1950. And that was Clemson's only non-victory of the season that year. It was more of an upset than anything else. The last time the Gamecocks won was back in 1975 and they clobbered the Tigers 56-20. The biggest Clemson win has been 51-0. That was back in 1900. The biggest USC win was 56-20, that one in 1975. The longest Clemson win streak was seven consecutive wins between 1934 and 1940. And then the longest Carolina win streak came in 1951 to 1954. They won four in a row. Clemson dominates the ACC stats this week. The Tigers lead the league in total offense, rushing offense, scoring offense, total defense, pass defense, scoring defense, and punt returns. Imagine all that. Individually, Steve Fuller leads the league in total offense by a wide margin. Fuller has a 52-yard per game lead on Ted Brown of NC State. Lester Brown leads the league in scoring at 8.4. 14 touchdowns. Jerry Butler has caught 17 passes more than any other receiver in the league. The senior wide receivers average 5.2 receptions per game. And Willie Jordan heads the ACC punt returners with a 13.8 average. Lester Brown is third in the conference and rushing with an average of 88.5 per game. Clemson is well represented this week in the NCAA stats. And we're going to run down some of those for you. 
as time goes along. In fact, we'll hit a couple of them for you right now. In scoring, Lester Brown with 84 points is eighth or tied at eighth actually in the nation. Obed Ariri is now at the number 20 slot in the nation, averaging seven points a game. He has 70 points so far. Jerry Butler is eighth in receiving. In 10 games, he's caught 52 for 835 yards, three touchdowns, 5.2. That's eighth in the nation for Jerry Butler. Total offense, Steve Fuller, the Heisman Trophy candidate from the Tigers, in 10 games, he's carried the ball 120 yards, 120 times for 587 yards, a net of 503. He's thrown the ball 162 times for uh, 1,350 yards. Total plays, 282, 1,853 yards, 6.6 a game. He is number 19 in the nation at 185.3 yards per game. We're going to have more excitement here. As our pregame show will continue, we'll have more from Death Valley in just a moment. On this Thanksgiving weekend, help each of us to be thankful for the many things you've given, one of which has been a very exciting football season. Just as a team that does their best to win a conference championship, help us to strive to be the best individuals we can be in all areas of living. Grant us the strength to be winners in our daily lives, doing all for your glory, and realizing that when life is over, what we have done for you and others is all that will remain. In your name we pray. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Well, you know, anybody that thinks the Gamecocks of South Carolina don't have a good football team are very sadly mistaken. George Rogers needs only 117 yards rushing today for a thousand yard season. He's been injured some this year. And Johnny Wright needs 161 yards to go for a thousand yards. So you know that they have got to have a good offensive line out front of those guys. Britt Parrish needs one field goal to set a school record for the most three pointers in a career. And he's currently tied with uh, Bobby Marino with 24. George Rogers also needs 72 yards to become number seven in career rushing at uh, Carolina. He enters today's game with 1,506 yards, and Jeff Grant's currently is number seven. He had 1,577 yards while he was down there. And Johnny Wright's the number 11 career rusher with 1,210 yards. He needs only 41 yards to move into 10th place ahead of King Dixon, 67 yards to move into ninth place. So they've got to have a good offensive line. Their defense has been very good. And uh, maybe uh, with uh, a whole season under his belt now, Harper is going to develop into the quarterback that Charlie Pell has told you he is a good one. The one that they think might be the man of the future. 
We're going to find out all that. The Tigers are going to be coming here in just a little while, but now it's time to turn this thing over to a guy who has been describing these ball games to you now quite well for quite some time, the voice of the Clemson Tigers. Here's Jim Phillips. All right, Ken, thank you so much. And hi again, everybody, and what a sight it is here at the Valley today. Some 63,000, and Ken, although they're above us, all of those who are in the new edition, I took the opportunity about 20 minutes ago to walk down in the stands and turn and look back up to the south, and it is quite an impressive sight to see those additional 10,000 sitting high above us here at the Valley this afternoon. Let's check the starting lineups, and we'll go first to the Gamecocks of South Carolina under Jim Carlin. The tight end is Willie Scott, 6'5", a 230-pound sophomore out of Newberry. At left tackle, Bill Lane from Acme, Pennsylvania, 6'3", 240 pounds, a junior. The left guard, Steve Gattell out of Ormond Beach, Florida, 6'1", 240 pounds, a sophomore. Danny Clancy, probably the best on the offensive line for South Carolina. From Oxon Hill, Maryland, 6'2", 250 pounds, senior. The right guard, Tony Penny out of Worcester, Mass, 6'1", 240, a senior. At right tackle, George Schechterly, 6'2", 250 pounds, a sophomore. And the split end, John Bailey from Clover, South Carolina, 6'2", 190 pounds, and the junior. In the backfield, at quarterback, it'll be Gary Harper. Harper out of Hialeah, Florida, six feet tall, 175 pounds, sophomore. The fullback, George Rogers from Duluth, Georgia, 6'2", a 200-pound sophomore who missed a couple of games with a shoulder injury. Tailback Johnny Wright out of Fort Myers, Florida, 6'1", 200 pounds, a sophomore. And the flanker, Zion McKinney, out of Pickens, nearby, six feet tall, 190 pounds, and a junior. So that's the offensive alignment for the Gamecocks of South Carolina as they enter into this football game here this afternoon. And the Tigers will line up offensively with Anthony King and Cliff Bray at the tight ends. Billy Hudson and Steve Kenny at the tackles. Chris Dolsey and Joe Bostic at guards. Junior Jeff Bostic will be at center position. Steve Fuller at quarterback. Marvin Sims and Tracy Perry will work at fullback. Lester Brown, Harold Goggins, Warren Ratchford at tailback. Dwight Clark and Perry Tuttle from the flanker position. And below us, both teams take to the field now. The Gamecocks come out of their locker room. The Tigers enter as they come down the hill. For some 25 seniors, it's the final trip down the hill into the valley, an emotional experience, as some of the players were telling us prior to this football game this afternoon. We're just minutes away from the start of the action, so let's take 75 seconds for station identification and a word from our sponsors. This is the Clemson Football Network. be grabbed off by Ratchford at the three. Up over the five as he turns to his left at the 10. To the 15, he's got running room at the 30. 35, Ratchford out to the 40 and finally down at the 44-yard line. Hastings, Andy Hastings across to make the tackle on Ratchford. They had the return left. And believe me, had it not been for the fact that Rat ran over one of his own men, I believe it may have been Jeff Sewell who's out in front. He may have gone for a long, long way. Spotted at the 45. Fuller brings them out in the eye. Marvin Sims at fullback. Lester Brown the tailback. Butler goes wide to the right side. Fuller up under center. Takes out. This time Sims gets the call. 50, 45, 44-yard line before he goes down. Robert Perlow 
the free safety makes the tackle on Marvin Sims, but the offensive line really coming off the football that time as they open up over Billy Hudson and Chris Dolsey, and Sims bursting through the hole to the 43 of the Gamecocks. Tigers would like to run uh, fullback, 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 so let's watch it. Butler again goes wide to the right side as Fuller once more brings his team out. First and 10, Gamecock territory at the 43-yard line. Fuller out from there, gives off to Lester Brown. Big hole of the left tackle, 35. Lester into the 30-yard line before he is pulled down. Andy Hastings, the right cornerback, comes across to nail Lester Brown. But that'll be enough for another Tiger first down. In two possessions, they reel off two consecutive first down plays. Carolina runs a, a basic five-man front, uh, very little different than anybody else. Sims and Brown again in the eye as Butler goes wide to the right side and Fuller brings them out once again. Steve at quarterback at the 30-yard line of the Gamecocks takes out. This time is keeping, turns up over left side at the 20-yard line and down he goes at the 17-yard line before Steve Burnish, the defensive tackle, can come across and get him. Three plays from the line of scrimmage offensively for the Tigers. Three first downs. Heisman Trophy winner just read his, read his keys in there, uh, read the blocks or the hole. We have an injured Gamecock out there. Don't call him a Heisman Trophy winner. How about uh, Did I say that? Uh, <laughs> candidate? I'm sorry. He, what I meant to say was the kid is a winner and has been all his life. Scott Wade, the defensive linebacker on the right side for the Gamecocks, is injured on that play. That is being tended to now out around the 28-yard line. I guess the word winner came into my mind when I thought back from junior high days, Steve Fuller has been a pressure tie ball player and a winner all through Spartanburg High School and since he has been here. Ken, I was at Jim Carlin's press conference on Monday and the question came up from the press that was gathered in Columbia. What type of football player is Steve Fuller? Does he have the potential to be a professional quarterback? Jim Carlin's answer to that was when pro scouts asked me my opinion of Steve Fuller, I answered them only one way. Fellas, he's a winner. Well, that's, uh, you know, the, the thing that, that that you've got to remember about Steve. He's, he had a little rough beginning, but uh, as time has come along, he has just developed. Coaching had a lot to do with it, but he himself had most of it. Well, Scott Wade, it would appear, has an injury to his right leg, and certainly we're sorry to see him go out. One of the areas defensively that South Carolina has had concern with has been the linebacker spot. They're thin there. Singleton and Wade have gone first team, and Stevie Lee has doubled up on both sides and is in there right now on the right side replacing Wade. Butler again goes wide to the right side. It's Tiger football, first and 10 at the 17-yard line of the Gamecocks. They work from an eye formation. Fuller up under quarterback takes out. Lester Brown straight ahead to the 15-yard line, piled up there. Knocked down as he hits into the middle and up defensively for South Carolina with Stevie Lee with Bill Janice, the middle guard. So it's a gain of two. It'll bring about second down and eight now for the Tigers. They received the opening kickoff. Warren Ratchford returned the kickoff out to the 45-yard line. Three consecutive first downs. And now second and eight at the Gamecock 15. Butler wide to the right side again. Fuller sets them in the eye. Steve up under center now. Takes out. This time, keeping, rolling to his right, pitch out in the corner, Lester Brown, he's at the 10, down to the 9-yard line. Jerry Butler with a good block on the corner. Rick Sanford, who missed a lot of action with a knee injury, comes up from his cornerback position to make the tackle at the 9. It'll be third down and two for the Tigers. Tracy Perry has just checked in. They'll work power eye now. He... Marvin Sims and Lester Brown will comprise the power eye, and Tracy will be the power to the right side. Two tight ends, Cliff Bray and Anthony King. Fuller takes out, gives to Lester, straight ahead. I don't know if he gets it or not. He was hammered hard as he dove into the middle, and I believe he stopped shy of a first down as Stevie Lee and Robert Perlow were there defensively for the Gamecocks. They have marked the football at the eight-yard line. It's going to be fourth and one for the Tigers. And Steve Fuller wants to go for it as he looks over to the Tiger bench. And now we'll come over to discuss it as we have a timeout. So with timeout on the field, 12-17 remaining in the first quarter of play, the score Clemson nothing, South Carolina nothing.
12-17 to go here in the first quarter at the Valley. Tigers have the ball. Fourth and short at the eight-yard line in Gamecock territory. The Tigers have only run five plays from scrimmage, and they're going to go for it, Jim. Well, it's that big gamble here in the early moments. And this is the type gamble that could set up a wave of momentum in one direction or the other. Should the Tigers get the first down, it goes in their favor. But should this Gamecock defense stand up and say no and deny, then it would lift them mightily. Fuller up under center, power eye formation. This time it is Lester Brown. First down at the five, the four, the three, the two, down to the one foot line. Lester Brown would not go down. He was hit around the five, but he kept moving, moving, pumping the feet, dragging Stevie Lee, Bill Janis with him, carries inside the one to the one foot line, where it is first and goal, Tigers, power eye again, Fuller, touchdown. Steve Fuller over the top from a yard away. That's TD number nine on the year for Fuller. And Obed Ariri will come on now to try and tack on point number seven as the Tigers score with 12-01 remaining in first quarter play. Billy Lott to hold. As we await the snap, the spot, Ariri's kick is up, is, is dead. So there is time out on the field. The score here at the Valley. Clemson seven, South Carolina nothing. to go. In the first quarter, the Tigers out front by a score of 7-0. It took them seven plays as the kickoff was returned by Ratchford to the 44-yard line in Tiger territory. From there, they went in seven plays, a fuller touchdown from one yard out. The Ariri PAT and the Tigers were out front 7-0 about the seventh time this year they scored the first time they got their hands on the ball. Kickoff time, Ariri tees it up, Jim. All right, Zion McKinney is to the near side for the Gamecocks. Up the middle, it will be Horace Smith. And to the far side, Johnny Wright. Ariri, though, likes to kick to the sideline. So let's see which side he decides to go to now. I was kidding Obed after the game last week, told him he kicked off more against Maryland than he did against the Citadel. He was kicking so many out of bounds. Going to come to the near side with it, and McKinney will back up to the five, gather it in, up to the 10, the 15. He's got running room at the 20, out over the 25, fumbles the football, and the Tigers have it at the 34-yard line. Zion McKinney was hit by either J.D. Haglin or Rick Wyatt, I don't know, I believe it was J.D., the senior out of Pittsburgh, who got to him, and the ball popped loose. And then Haglin comes up with it, or Gary Webb comes up with it. Someone came up with it, I know that. The Tigers have it at the 35-yard line. So Fuller and company set to go now at the 35 of the Gamecocks. Steve up under center. Butler goes wide to the right side. This time Fuller keeping, turning up over the 30. Out of bounds he goes around the 26-yard line. Robert Perlote was there defensively for South Carolina. As Fuller carries into the 26 on a nine-yard pickup. And it'll be second down, just a little better than a yard for the Tigers now. All right, the Gamecocks need to settle down here and try to hold on because uh, this is going to be a shocker. You give up a touchdown in seven plays, and then you've got a chance. You've got a nice return, and then, boom, you lose the ball. 11.47 remaining first quarter. Clemson 7, South Carolina nothing. Butler goes wide to the right side as Fuller is up under center, takes out. Here's Lester Brown. Good defensive play as Bill Janis, the middle guard, was all over Lester from the moment he grabbed the football off of Fuller, and they throw him for a loss back at the 27-yard line. So Janis that time sniffing out the play. Lester never really got a step on him because Janis had crashed inside. 
Got around Jeff Bostic beautifully and was able to get right in on top of Lester Brown. And the Tigers are faced with third and two now. Butler again goes wide to the right side. Eye formation behind Fuller. That's Tracy Perry and Lester Brown. As Fuller is up under center. Takes out. This time, keeping, pitching out on the corner. Brown, first down. He's at the 20, 15. Lester down to the eight-yard line. Again, it was Jerry Butler who threw a big block on the corner. And Lester Brown, skipping to the sideline, turned it back up in over the middle and carries into the nine-yard line, where it'll be first and goal, Tigers, as Biondi made the defensive play for South Carolina. So a big third down conversion there. JB comes wide to the left side. Again, they work from the eye with Perry and Brown in behind Fuller at quarterback. Steve now up under center, takes out. This time riding it off, Tracy Perry, straight ahead he goes, carries into about the seven-yard line where Fred Sinclair is there defensively for the Gamecocks. 7-0, Clemson on top. 10 minutes, 25 seconds remaining, first quarter action. The Tigers received the opening kickoff, drove downfield for the score. Kicked off to Carolina, Zion McKinney fumbled on the return. They take over at the 35 and have now driven into the seven-yard line where it's second and goal. Butler wide to the left side as Fuller is up under center. Steve has them in the eye, takes out. This time is riding it off to Perry, straight ahead. Down to the one-yard line goes Tracy Perry. Steve Burdish and Tim Singleton bring him down, but Billy Hudson, Chris Dolce, Jeff Bostick were all in there blocking, as was Ed Abreu, the tight end on that side. And Perry has carried to the one where it's third and goal, Tigers. Power eye strong to the left side. Fuller at quarterback, Lester Brown, touchdown. <laughs> Lester Brown with TD, number 15 on the year. Last week, he tied Fred Cohn's record of rushing touchdowns on the year now has tied Fred Cohn's record of touchdowns in one year for a Tiger, 15. And over to Reary on to try and make it a 14-0 football game. Billy Lott to hold. The kick is up. The kick is good. So there is time out of the field with 9.31 remaining here in the first quarter. The score, Clemson 14, South Carolina. You know, Zach Mills, who has been the Tiger this year, just an outstanding job, and it's a nice thing to know that Zach will be around next year as a senior, but he is the only Tiger I know of who has been able to take that Tiger uniform and turn it into something different each and every week. He's got coveralls on today over that Tiger uniform. Again, over to Reary to kick off. McKinney down the near side, Smith up the middle, and right to the far side. It's going to be hitting and grabbed off by Mc, uh, McKinney at the 1, to the 5, the 10, up to the 15, and down he goes at the 17-yard line. Downfield was Paul Williams, brother of defensive tackle Tony Williams, out of Darlington, and he nails Zion McKinney. They will spot it at the 17-yard line, and now the Gamecocks will get their first opportunity to run an offensive play in the football game as they trail 14 to nothing. Gary Harper will have George Rogers and Johnny Wright in that backfield with him. Sometimes they'll work from an eye. Sometimes they'll work from a split backfield. They line up in the eye. Wide to the left side goes John Bailey as Harper is up under center. Now they go split with Rogers to the right side, and George Rogers gets the call. He is knocked down as he moves to the 19-yard line. There defensively for the Tigers was Randy Scott with help from Jim Stuckey. So it'll be a gain of two yards as they spot the football now at the 19-yard line, second down and eight for South Carolina. Rodgers and Wright have over 800 yards each rushing coming into this ball game. That's a pretty good season. Ben Cornett out of Greenville, South Carolina, has moved in as a tight end now, and wide to the left side goes John Bailey as they work from an eye. Gary Harper at quarterback, split backfield now, right to the left, Rodgers to the right, Harper keeping, turns upfield, down he goes at the 21-yard line. Bubba Brown was the first to get to him. Tony Williams and David Reed up aiding out on the tackle. So mark it at the 21, where it'll be third down, six yards to go for South Carolina with 8.35 remaining here in first quarter action, and the Tigers on top, 14 to nothing. 
This the regular season's finale. And what a crowd. Some 63,000 here this afternoon. Wide left goes Bailey. They split Scott from the right side. Back to throw. Harper looking, firing a swing pass out in the right flat, intended for Rogers, but he can't hang on around the 17-yard line. And probably just as well he didn't because John Brooks was face up on him right there. And so the Gamecocks, unable to get a first down in their first possession, will now punt the football as Max Renniger comes on and Willie Jordan backs up deep for the Tigers. Runniger, one of the outstanding punters in the country. He's finishing a career at South Carolina, and he's had an outstanding career. Awaiting the snap. Back it goes. And we got a whistle out here. I don't know whether we had encroachment by the Tigers or delay of game. I'm not sure which. The Tigers say somebody raised up in that game well, they did. line. They did. The illegal procedure against South Carolina is the call. A couple of Tigers stepped into the encroachment area on a couple of occasions, and the last time it was indicated that South Carolina had dragged them across. So Runniger now will back up to the goal line awaiting the snap, and Willie Jordan will stand at his own 44-yard line awaiting the kick. Ready for the snap now. Back it goes. Runniger gets it away. High spiral. Jordan on a fair catch. Grabs it off at his own 47-yard line. And that's where the Tigers will take over first and 10 on a 37-yard punt by Max Runniger. And Willie Jay looked as if he may have been experiencing a little problem with the sun that time, Ken, as he went after the football. Yeah, he, for a minute I thought he was just going to take it and go. And he called his fair catch a little early. Jim Clemson this week is number two in the nation in punt returns. Carolina's tied for top as a team in uh, punting at 40.9. And actually their punter is averaging a little over uh, 42 yards. Jerry Butler comes wide to the left side. Marvin Sims, Lester Brown in the eye behind Steve Fuller at quarterback. As Steve takes out, here's Lester Brown. Nowhere to go. He's thrown for a loss on the play by Bill Janis. I don't know if Janice is keying on Brown or not, but the last couple of times that Lester's had the football, Janice has been right with him, and this time hauls him down for a two-yard loss. You know, one of the things, uh, the, the, the middle guard is lining up occasionally head on the center of Clemson, then other times he's lining up in a gap. Butler again comes wide to the left side. Abreu is a tight end to the right. Anthony King tight to the left side. Eye formation behind Fuller at quarterback. Steve has not gone to the air prior to now, but he's back to throw, looking over the middle, firing Butler. He's got it, and he is down at the 42-yard line, but they rolled it incomplete. The ball popped out. It was hard to see it pop out because Hastings was there hitting, and a couple of other defenders were coming up, and they all went down, so evidently the ball came out when Jerry made the grab. Boy, that was a good, hard hit that time by Andy Hastings. So it's back to the 45 where it's third down 12 for the Tigers and a big third down conversion needed here. Oh, see, anybody could have held on to that pass the way he was hit and sandwiched in there. Well thrown. Clark goes wide to the right side. Butler splits out left. Fuller sets them down in the eye. Takes out. Drops the throw. Drop. Up, fake draw. Fuller going to run with it. He gets back to the 47 and that'll be it. As Chuck Allen is there to get him. Boy, had they called the draw that time, Lester had popped through there on the fake draw. Hard telling where he may have ended up. But David Sims now is on to do the punting as dropping back is Horace Smith for the Gamecocks. Fair catch called for. A collision, and maybe the Tigers have the football. Let's see. Yes, they have the football. Two South Carolina players went after it. Jeff Bostick comes up with the football. Smith was back, and then someone came over in front of him waving fair catch, and they collided, and the ball dropped out, and the Tigers have recovered at the 26-yard line of South Carolina. You know, I wonder if uh, the Cox were a little bit too jacked up for this ball game. All right, Butler is going wide to the right side. High formation behind Fuller at quarterback. Steve now moves up under center, takes out, this time riding it off. Tracy Perry, first man through. He crosses the 25 to 24 yard line, and down he goes there. Across defensively for South Carolina this time comes Spent. Gain of two, second and eight for the Tigers. 
Jim, want to say right now uh, about Scott Wade. He's on the bench on the far side, ice pack, right knee. Well, it didn't look good when he went out. All right, Butler is wide to the left side now as Fuller again sets them down in the eye. Steve up under center, takes out this time, giving off to Perry again, and Tracy Perry finds running room and has enough, I believe, for a first down. Let's see where they spot the football. Well, they'll be shy by about a yard as they mark it in at the 17-yard line. Stevie Lee and Robert Perlote were there defensively for the Gamecocks, and the Tigers now will be faced with a third and one in at the 17-yard line of South Carolina as Marvin Sims checks in and Jerry Butler comes out. They'll work from a power eye formation. 5.47 remaining, first quarter. 14-0 Tigers, they're threatening again. Fuller sets them down in the power eye with Perry, the strength to the right side. Lester Brown, he has the first down as he's into the 15-yard line. So the Tigers will have it first and 10, and we've got 15 seconds for station identification on the Clemson Football Network. to the Gamecocks. White Clark wide to the right side. Tigers first and ten. They lead 14-0. Fuller up under center has them in the eye. This time is keeping. Rolling to his right behind the block. Fuller into the ten. Down to the nine-yard line he goes. Steve Fuller finally hauled down by Chuck Allen. The ball spotted at the nine where it'll be second down. Four yards to go for the Tigers now. He hit Perlot, and he looked like uh, he hurt, uh, it shook him up a little bit. Fuller is so big and strong until uh, the young man from Hodges looked like he was not going to get up for a while. All right, Fuller moves them out again in the eye. Dwight Clark is wide to the left side as a flanker. Steve up under center now, takes out. This time Lester Brown over left tackle, gets into about the seven and is hit hard at the seven-yard line as Tim Singleton's there along with Neil Timmons. So mark the football at the seven-yard line where it now will be third down and two yards to go for the Tigers. Jim, I've been trying to see if I could pick out anything uh, different that's being done. It looks like the Clemson offensive line has been told that they would not eat tonight if they didn't uh, do a lot of blocking today. They're just blowing them out of there. They control the ball game. Dwight Clark wide to the right side. I formation again behind Steve Fuller, the quarterback now as Steve sets them down. It's third and two at the seven. Fuller takes out. This time is keeping, turning up the left side. He's got the first down and more as he's into the three-yard line. Bill Janis there defensively for South Carolina. But Fuller, as he was doing a week ago, with that extra body lean, digging the feet and churning forward, was grabbed back around the six, but fought his way into the three where it's first and goal Tigers. Amazing strength for a quarterback. You don't expect that kind of running out of a quarterback. He's just so strong. Well, as someone once said, Steve could play tailback. There's the give to Lester Brown over the top. Boy, what a pop as he was hit by Tim Singleton as he went over the right side. And Singleton really got a shoulder up on Lester's shoulder, and the two of them collide in midair in a big pop. And down goes Lester at the two. It'll be second and goal from there. His pain threshold has got to be... Uh, <laughs> it's got to be high, Jim. Now come the Tigers. Gideon Bostick on the right side of that offensive line. Hudson and Dulce left side. Lester Brown right side. Going to be stopped down around the one-yard line. Did not get in. It'll be third and goal now as Roger Wolbright and Chuck Allen were there defensively for the Gamecocks to stop Lester Brown to keep him out of the end zone. Lester just moments ago scored his 15th touchdown on the year. His 90th point on the year. Jim, we've got a slightly limping uh, Tracy Perry out there, too. Out they come in the power eye once again. Fuller at quarterback. Lester Brown gets the call and over the top for the touchdown. And this time the difference was the surge of the offensive line and a block from Marvin Sims because the line had fallen down under the onrush of the charging defenders. And Sims came in to throw a block on that linebacker, and Lester went right over top of him for the score. It's 20 to nothing, Tigers. 
And Ariri's on to try the point after now as Billy Lott will hold. The snap, the spot, the kick is good. Timeout on the field. The score, Tigers 21, South Carolina nothing. on the uh, far side on the, the Gamecock coaches and football players over there. It's a little bit of study and frustration and uh, deep determination right now. You've got to be a little frustrated. You fall behind. You force the team to punt. Looks like you're going to get the ball in some decent field position. Instead, you lose the football. You give up another touchdown. Well, it's and the second turnover that has cost yes. them. Zion McKinney's fumble on the kickoff return and then the collision between the two on the punt. And both times, the Tigers get the football in excellent field position, 35 and 30-yard lines, respectively. McKinney to the near side, Johnny Wright to the far side, and Horace Smith up the middle now, uh, back as deep receivers for South Carolina. While Obed Ariri will place it on the tee at the 40-yard line for the Tigers. Still 2.34 remaining here in the first quarter, and the Tigers have punched it into the end zone on three occasions. There's O'Reary approaching the football, a high end over end kick again. It's this time Smith going to come over and take it at the goal line, up to the 5, the 10, out to the 15. Down he goes as he gets to the 20-yard line. Over was J.D. Haglin once again to make the tackle, and South Carolina takes over first and 10 now at their own 20, trailing 21 to nothing in the football game. Well, Lester Brown has set a new single-season record for touchdowns by a Tiger that was his 16th on the year, a total of 96 points on the year. John Bailey goes wide to the left side. Harper has Rogers and Wright in the eye formation. Now they shift with Wright moving to the right side. Pitch back to George Rogers. Over right tackle, out over the 20, 25, out to the 28-yard line he goes. Bubba Brown was there defensively. But George Rogers carrying out to the 28-yard line before he is pulled down. Charlie Bauman, middle guard, was also up defensively there. A gain of eight. It'll be second down and two for the Gamecocks. Jim, he almost lost the ball. He was going down, and the ball came loose. It was a big pile up there, but they say the, it was blown. The whistle had blown. Second down, two for South Carolina. Willie Scott out. Ben Cornett checks in at tight end. John Bailey goes wide to the left side. Zion McKinney is split off right end. High formation. Now they split with Rogers left. Rogers gets the call. He's got a first down as he crosses the 30 to the 31 yard line. And is caught there by Bubba Brown and Randy Scott. So it'll be the initial first down of the afternoon for the Gamecocks as they have it now. First and 10 at their own 31 yard line. Minute 38 remains here in the first quarter of play. Death Valley, a crowd of 63,000 fans here. The upper deck open for the first time. What a beautiful sight it is. Wide to the left side now goes Bailey. High formation behind Harper at quarterback. First time they've remained in the eye. They've been shifting out of it. Harper is back to throw, has time, looking over the middle and firing. Intercept. Oh! Almost intercepted by Randy Scott, who had it in his arms. John Bailey was the intended receiver. Scott a little upset with himself. He wanted that football. Just couldn't handle it. Jim, one of the things the Gamecocks did not want to do was get in a position of having to throw the football. They were hoping they would be able to run at the Tigers. They were worried about their ability to throw at them. And now here they are with uh, a minute to go still in the first quarter, down 21 points. They have to throw it. Ball at the 31-yard line, second down and 10. Bailey goes wide to the left side. Again, they're in the eye behind Harper at quarterback. Now they shift. Rogers to the right. Rogers gets the pitch back, comes out over the 35. Down he goes at the 37-yard line. And George Rogers, the sophomore out of Duluth, Georgia, racing to daylight. And Bubba Brown finally catches up with him of Steve Ryan. And they wrestle him down at the 37-yard line, where it'll be third down and four yards to go for South Carolina. 
Jeff Bryant and Steve Durham report in at defensive tackle now. Tony Williams and Jim Stuckey get out of there. Third and four Gamecocks as Harper has them in the eye. Harper takes out, rolling to his right, turns upfield. He is close to a first down as he goes down around the 40 or 41 yard line. John Brooks was there along with Randy Scott. And we'll see whether or not Harper gets the first down. Harper's going to have to run that keeper some to uh, let the Gamecocks generate some offense. I'll tell you, he's close to a first down. I believe he may have it. He put bring a, the chain sticks in to take a look, but it looks to me as though he's got enough for the first down. And he did it on some extra effort, too. 32 seconds remain here in the first quarter of action. 21-0, Tigers on top. It is a first down for the Gamecocks. So Gary Harper, electing to keep on the option that time, carries for a first down at the 41-yard line. And the Gamecocks now have garnered two first downs in this drive that began at their own 20. Out they come, wide to the right side, John Bailey. High formation behind Gary Harper, quarterback. That's Rogers and Johnny Wright. Now Wright swings out to the right side in a split backfield. Rogers gets the call. He's up over the 40, 45, and out to the 48-yard line. Bubba Brown finally catches up to him with help from Rex Barn. But George Rogers, the 200-pound sophomore who has delighted Gamecock fans, and the thing about him, Ken, is not only his strength, but the quickness that he has to go with it. He's a sprinter. We've reached the end of the first quarter of play, and here at the Valley, with timeout, after one quarter, the score, Clemson 21, South Carolina nothing. The award-winning college school, the varsity sport of the planet, is coming to Clemson University. The competition schedule for January 17th. the second period and the Tigers are out front 21 nothing over the Gamecocks who have the ball and are on the move here they come all right South Carolina with the football Gary Harper sets them down on the eye split backfield Rogers to the right side this time it is Johnny Wright he's got a big hole over left tackle crosses the 45 of the Tigers into the 41 yard line where Jeff Bryant pulls him down so mark it at the Tiger 41 now as South Carolina sustains a drive that began back at their own 20 14.55 remaining here, first half. Here's a score from Columbus, Ohio. Michigan has taken a 10-3 lead over the Buckeyes of Ohio State there in the second quarter of play. And, of course, the loser of that game, Michigan-Ohio State, meets the Tigers in the Gator Bowl December 29th. Harper sets them down at the 41, back to throw, looking, firing deep down the left side, and it is cut for a touchdown. Smith makes the grab on a beautifully thrown pass from Gary Harper as they beat Willie Jordan deep down the left side and the Gamecocks are on the board and their fans who are in the West End zone demonstrating wildly now. A bomb. 41 yards. Gary Harper to Horace Smith. And suddenly it's 21 to 6 as we have Britt Parrish on now to attempt the point after. I don't know who said that they didn't want to throw the ball. I'll tell you one thing. Smith has come up with some mighty big grabs this year. The spot, the kick is up. The kick is good. So there was time out on the field with the score here at the Valley. Tigers 21, South Carolina 7.
It's a shootout at Death Valley right now. Tigers lead it 21-7 over the Gamecocks. Gamecocks went 80 yards in eight plays, a big one. Harper to Smith, 41 yards for the touchdown, 14-27 to go at the half. And now the Tigers get a chance to receive a kickoff for the first time or the second time this afternoon. The opening kickoff was theirs. They took it, marched in. Matter of fact, Rat almost broke it. Rat and Jordan back there now. You know, Ken, Horace Smith was an almost unknown quantity prior to the game against Ole Miss when he caught that pass from Harper as time was running out and brought the Gamecocks from behind for victory. And since then, he's a name that has come on as a freshman. Here is Ratchford at the 12, gets the kickoff, 20, 30, Rat out to the 40, and down he goes at the 45-yard line. The senior from Gaffney turning it on up the near sideline before Robert Perlow brings him down. And do you think that young man playing in his final game here at the Valley doesn't feel some emotion this afternoon? You know, Jim, people ask me uh, when I go places occasionally, where's Ratchford? Ratchford is alive and well and uh, playing a lot of football for the Tigers in his own way this year. Jerry Butler goes wide to the left side as Steve Fuller brings them out now. High formation, Marvin Sims, Lester Brown in behind, Fuller keeping, pitching out on the corner for Lester. He's at midfield, gets into Gamecock territory and is down around the 47-yard line. Andy Hastings chasing him out of bounds. Here's a correction. In the first or in the second quarter, that score stands Michigan 7, Ohio State 3 in Columbus, Ohio this afternoon in their traditional battle. 7-3, Michigan on top. The winner of that game goes to the Rose Bowl, of course, to meet Southern Cal. And the loser meets Clemson in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, the 29th. Ball is at the 47-yard line of the Gamecocks. It'll be second down, two yards to go for the Tigers as Jerry Butler comes wide to the right side. You know, Jim, uh, Steve Fuller seems to be running the option play today as well as he has at any time in his career as a Tiger. Holding back, pitching at the very last second. And, of course, Lester is an ideal trailing back in that option because he, he remains at one step behind his quarterback and always in view. They're in the eye now as Fuller lines them up. Takes out. Marvin Sands over the middle. He's at the 35-yard line. John D'Antonio and Robert Perlo. But behind a block by the Bostics, Jeff and Joe, Sims carries to the 36 where it's a first down Tigers. You know, Sims probably came into his own as a Tiger football player in the game against Carolina last year. Wide to the right side comes JB, Jerry Butler. Steve Fuller at quarterback sets them down in the eye. Takes out, this time keeping, turns up over left tackle. He carries into about the 31-yard line, and down he goes there. Tim Singleton, left side linebacker, up defensively. So mark it at the 31. Second down and five now for the Tigers. They lead it 21 to 7. The Gamecocks were down 21 to nothing, but Gary Carper roared back through a 41-yard touchdown pass to Horace Smith, and it's 21 to 7 at the moment. Fuller brings Butler wide to the right side. This time is giving out to Sims. He's across the 25. Down he goes to the 21-yard line, and that'll be another first down for the Tigers. You know, it was a year ago in Columbia that Marvin Sims came into his own as a fullback with the Tiger football team. Dulce and Bostic that time opened it up over the left side for Sims. First and 10 Tigers at the 21. 13.05 remaining here in the first half of play. Butler wide to the right. Sims and Brown, I formation behind Fuller at quarterback. Steve now takes out, pitch back. Lester Brown sweeping to the right behind a block by Bostic is going to be hit right around the line of scrimmage and down he goes at the 21 yard line as Bill Janis once again comes up on Lester Brown and Janice looks like he has a contract out on Lester today. He certainly has uh, seen a lot of film and uh, been coached well on on the plays that are going to Lester. Second down 10 for Clemson now the ball at the 21 yard line JB goes wide to the left side. Marvin Sims Lester Brown in the eye behind Fuller at quarterback Steve up under center takes out this time Marvin Sims sliding out over left tackle he's inside the 20 to about the 18 perhaps the 17 yard line and he's knocked down there Marvin Sims hit by Stevie Lee and Lou Biondi 
Where's Biondi from? Biondi is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There's a pawn shop on a corner in Pittsburgh, PA. <laughs> you old enough to remember that? No, uh, I'm really not. Come on. <laughs> Guy Mitchell, huh? Third down, seven yards to go. Wide to the right, Butler. I formation behind Fulham quarterback at the Gamecock 17. Steve takes out this time, riding off to Sims over right tackle. He's inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. But that'll be it as he is stacked up. And let's see where they spot the football down. Tim Singleton was up defensively for the Gamecocks with help from Brett Bond. It's at the 14, and over to Reary is going to come on and try a field goal. So Reary will attempt a three pointer. You know, Lester is the number eight scorer in the nation coming into today's game, but close behind him and number 20 in the nation is the young man who is out there now, Obed Ariri. Billy Lott will hold. The ball will be spotted at the 20. It'll be a 30-yard effort. It's spotted. The kick is up. The kick is no good. No good. He missed it. And I'm not sure. Wide to the right, they say. So Ariri misses the field goal. Wide to the right, and the football comes out to the 20-yard line. That may be a big miss before the afternoon is over. Jim, today's crowd 63,479, and as far as this can be determined, this is the largest crowd ever to see a football game between Philadelphia and Birmingham. Well, obviously, it's the largest ever to see a football game in North or South Carolina, or Clemson, or Georgia. <laughs> All right, Gary Harper and company at the 20-yard line. They shift now into a split backfield. Out it comes. Harper back to throw. Uh, rides it off. I beg your pardon to Spencer Clark, who's in a tailback. Harper carried out a good fake as he rolled to his right. Randy Scott came over along with Rex Barn to make the tackle. Harper has Dorsey and Clark in that backfield now. Game was negligible. Ball is at the 20 and a half yard line. Call it second down and a long nine. Wide to the left side comes Horace Smith. He gathered in a touchdown pass on the last possession by South Carolina. Harper takes out, keeping, coming to his left, now turns upfield, and down he goes around the 24-yard line. John Brooks and Jeff Bryant there defensively. Bryant looked like he was going to mug him. Got a hit out behind Brooks. He was going to what? Mug him, you know. Like oh, was, mug him, mug yeah. him. Oh, okay. Yeah, ambush him. I know what you mean now. <laughs> It's at the 24. It's third down. Six yards to go for the Gamecocks now. Smith comes wide to the left side as Harper sets them down in the eye. Now they shift. Split backfield. Harper back to throw on third down. Looking, firing. He's got Smith open and he's got it across the 35 at the 37-yard line. Forced out of bounds there by Eddie Gathers, but again, Horace Smith, the young freshman, comes open on a down and out. And Harper gets a big third down play there. At its first down, Gamecocks at their own 36-yard line, and they have settled down considerably now here in this football game. They have not allowed the fact that they were down 21 to nothing shake them in this game this afternoon. High formation behind Harper at quarterback as they shift now. This time on a reverse, McKinney. And they reverse it back the other way to Smith. A flag on the play as Smith is over the midfield stripe. Crosses into Tiger territory at the 39, but there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Eddie Gathers made the tackle. And let's see what the flag is all about now. Jim, while we're looking at that, Gathers was the only man who stayed home. I believe it's going to go against the Tigers. The penalty goes against the Tigers, and the double reverse pays off in dividends as South Carolina has it first to 10 at the Tiger 40-yard line as Clemson was offside on the play. So look out right now is a big series for South Carolina and Clemson in this football game, Ken. Tigers got the early momentum, but it has cooled considerably, and the Gamecocks have picked up momentum. Harper sets them down in the eye. They shift into a split backfield. Pitch back. This is Dorsey. Turning the left side. He's into the 34-yard line. And down he goes. Hit there by Randy Scott and Eddie Gathers. But Dorsey running very hard with reckless abandon. Carries into the 33-yard line where they have marked it down. And it'll be second down. Three yards to go for South Carolina. As we observed earlier, Jim, uh, there was uh, there was no panic in the Gamecocks across the way. There was only deep determination, uh, some frustration after what happened to them early. They know they're a good ball team. 
Morris Smith goes wide to the right side. Check that west end zone. It's full of Gamecock fans, and they're looking into the eyes of their team as they head their direction. Harper at quarterback. Has him in a split backfield. This time rides it off to Dorsey. Straight ahead he goes. Powers his way inside the 30. Down to the 29 where Tony Williams and David Reed come out defensively for the Tigers. But it's another first down Gamecocks. Willie Scott gets back in at tight end. Ben Cornett checks out. And now we have a timeout asked by the Tigers. Stopping the clock with 8.49 remaining here in the first half of play. And with timeout on the field, the score, Clemson 21, South Carolina 7. offensive line seems to have taken some control in this ball game they are opening up the holes in the Tiger defense they're pushing them back on some wedge blocking and the Gamecock backs as good and quick as they are are finding those creases and coming through there for the big gainers all right football at the Tiger 29 first down Gamecocks George Rogers and Spencer Clark in the eye behind Gary Harper at quarterback they shift to a split backfield Roger Harper keeping. He's at the 25. Down to the 20-yard line he goes. Gary Harper finally pulled down by Steve Ryan and Jeff Bryant. But Harper, the gutty young sophomore, faking the handoff to Rogers, gets nine big ones into the 20. It'll be second and one for South Carolina now. Take away two turnovers, uh, Jim. We have That's a tie ball game with uh, the Gamecocks moving. Absolutely. The difference in this football game. Early momentum to the Tigers on Gamecock mistakes. But now South Carolina has settled down. Harper has them at the 20. Second and one. Takes out. Rides it off to the first man through. That is Rogers. He's across the 15 to the 13-yard line. Hit there by Bubba Brown and Randy Scott. But George Rogers quick off the football. Carrying straight ahead, powers for a first down at the 13-yard line of the Tigers. Eight minutes, three seconds remaining. First half of play. Clemson on top, 21 to 7, but South Carolina now with momentum and possession at the Tiger 13. Horace Smith wide to the right side. Harper sets them in the eye. The sophomore quarterback reaches up under center now. They split in the backfield. He takes out. Pitch back, Rogers turns it over right tackle to the 10 to the 9-yard line. Finally hauled down at the 9, as up defensively this time for Clemson comes Steve Ryan once again. Now you know that the offensive line of scrimmage is doing a good job when your safeties are making the tackles. And Ryan, as a result of that last tackle, is headed to the sidelines favoring that right shoulder, the one that has bothered him all year, and Ogden Hansford has checked in to replace him. It's at the nine. It is second down. Six yards to go. South Carolina split backfield behind Harper. Here is the ride off to Rogers. Left tackle. He's inside the five to the two-yard line. And finally pulled down. Eddie Gathers is there defensively. But not before Rogers gets a first down. Gamecocks and they've got it first and goal at the Tiger two-yard line. You know, the Tigers all throughout uh, the season have faced those good running backs and have done a job on some of them. They didn't do that good a job on uh, Atkins at Maryland, but on Famous Amos and uh, your Ted Brown and some of the others. But Rodgers now is working on it. John Bailey wide to the right side as Harper brings them out of the eye. First and goal at the Tiger, two. Split backfield now. Harper takes out. This time it is Spencer Clark, and he is stopped just shy of the goal line. Flag on the play. Randy Scott came out of there with a the football, but I don't believe there was a fumble. However, there was a flag on the play. Now a big discussion as the officials and both teams are gathered around the one-yard line. See what this one's all about. Harry Harper and Randy Scott both come out there, or Bubba Brown both come out there to discuss this with the officials. Offside, Clemson is the call. 
So the Tigers guilty of a second offside penalty in this drive, one that hurt them very much when South Carolina ran the double reverse. Mark the football now at the one-yard line. And it will remain first down for the Gamecocks as the Tigers were offside on the play. So it is first and goal for the Gamecocks now. With 6.38 remaining here in the first half of play. Clemson with 21 quick points in the first quarter. But the Gamecocks have come back fighting strong. They have scored seven here in the second quarter. And they are on the verge of the goal line once again as Harper brings them out on the eye. They shift into a split backfield. Out it comes. Rogers, and he is denied, I believe, as he's down inside the one. Down around the six-inch line, Bubba Rollins came up with Bob Goldberg, and they make the stop on Rogers. So it'll be second down and goal now for South Carolina. You know, in a drive like this, Jim, as we mentioned before, uh, you, anybody, you need a big defensive play to stop something like this. Neither team has come up with that yet. John Bailey goes wide to the right side. Harper at quarterback. Sets him in the eye. Harper keeps and touchdown. <laughs> Gary Harper in from a foot out, and the Gamecocks are right back in it now as it's a 21 to 13 football game. And Britt Parrish will come on to attempt and make it a 21 to 14 football game. And we have pandemonium from 63,479 fans here at Death Valley this afternoon. Awaiting the snap now. Here's the spot. Parrish kick is up. The kick is good. So there was timeout on the field. The score, Clemson 21, South Carolina 14. guys said and the first half ain't even over yet uh, from their 20 yard line 13 plays later the Gamecocks with Harper going in from about a half yard out make it 21 14 after a parish PAT they're kicking off once more to the Tigers with 605 to go in the half and uh, we do have a dilly on our hands here and this crowd is just uh, beside itself both teams now with a lot of hope for a while the, the Gamecock fans didn't have much to cheer about but now wow well, I'll tell you what when you get these two great rivals together anything can happen it's happened too many times Warren Ratchford will wait for it gather it in at the one up over the five comes to the 10 to the 15 to 20 rat out over the 25 to the 28 yard line and down he goes they have a flag back around the 14 yard line may have a clip And the Tigers are backed up. I would suspect that they were detected clipping. That's the call. It'll be half the distance from the point of the infraction, the 14, and that'll set it back to the seven-yard line. So a good return there, nullified, as it comes back to the seven. And that's where the Tigers will start this drive as Steve Fuller and company now come onto the field. 21 and 14, the score. Clemson soccer team in St. Francis scoreless at the half. Well, that's a big NCAA playoff game this afternoon. JB, Jerry Butler goes wide to the left side. Tracy Perry and Lester Brown in the eye behind Fuller. Steve takes out. Perry gets the call straight ahead out over the 10 to the 13. But another flag on the play. Chuck Allen made the defensive stop for South Carolina, but a flag again went down. Offside, South Carolina this time. Well, you can tell that both defensive teams are very, very anxious here this afternoon. The Tigers have been offside twice defensively, and the Gamecocks, their lineup offside defensively. And the Tigers obviously will take the penalty. That'll bring it out to the 12, where it'll be first and five. Game reminds you of some of those games out of the Big Eight in the West Coast where they, uh, somebody wins 56 to 41. You know, 
a uh, lot of scoring going on. There's been a healthy amount of it here thus far this afternoon with still 549 remaining in the half. Butler goes wide to the left side as they line up in the eye again. First and five at the 12 yard line. Fuller at quarterback gives off to Tracy Perry. He's out around the 16, 17 yard line and down he goes there. Chuck Allen defensively for the Gamecocks that time. Mark the football to the 16 yard line where it'll be second and a yard now for the Tigers. 21 14 pumps it on top in this game. We'll be getting station identification very shortly. High formation. JB, Jerry Butler, wide to the right side. High formation. Tracy Perry straight ahead. First down as he pops his way to the 20 yard line before he is smothered there. And defensively for the Gamecocks, Fred Sinclair led the charge with help from Bill Janis. Well, Bill Foster's Tiger basketball team got off to a good start last night as they defeated the Cardinals of Catholic University, 108 to 67. And they'll be in action again Monday night at Little John at 7.30 when they meet the Furman Paladins. We'll have broadcast of that game at 7.15 along the Tiger Network. Fuller this time keeping behind a block by Perry, 25, 30, Fuller at the 35. To the 40 into the 41 yard line. Chuck Allen across to make the defensive play for South Carolina, but again, Steve Fuller exhibiting the tremendous abilities and skills that he has as he didn't really stretch it out that time, Ken. He just kind of felt his way along, stride for stride, was picking up the yardage and moved to the 41 yard line. Instinct and experience, you can't beat him. Jerry Butler goes wide to the left side. Tracy Perry at fullback. Lester Brown the tailback. Fuller at quarterback. Up under center. Takes out. Back to throw. Now fires over the middle. JB down around the 45. Did he get it? I believe it's a, a grab. Yep. It is a catch. We had to wait a long time to see whether or not they rolled it a catch. A first down at the 45 yard line. No official really reached in there and made a call, but I'll tell you, it was a good, clean catch. Anthony King was as open as he's ever been in his life. He must have been a secondary receiver. Fuller never even looked at him. Well, a pretty good rush was on from South Carolina, and Steve had to pick out Jerry and get it to him quickly. Dwight Clark comes wide to the right side now. Steve Fuller at quarterback takes out. This time is riding it off the Perry. Big hole over the left side. He's into the 40-yard line. Knocked down there by Fred Sinclair. Ed Abreu is getting in now. They spotted the football to the 39 yard line of the Gamecocks where it'll be second down and four for the Tigers. 21 and 14. Clemson on top. Wide right Dwight Clark. Second and four at the 39 as Fuller is up under center. They work from an eye. Steve takes out. This time is keeping. Coming wide to his right at the 35. Fuller into the 30. Still in his feet. Down to the 45 yard line. Steve Burnish finally brings him down. Joe Bostic was out in front as the pulling guard leading. And believe me, Steve Fuller again just exhibiting a great ability to run with the football, just picking his way to a first down at the 25-yard line. A Carolina watcher had told me, Jim, earlier that the teams that had hurt them most this year had been those with a good running quarterback. Wide to the right side comes Dwight Clark as Fuller again lines them up in the eye. They're at the 25 where it's first and 10. The ride off to Tracy Perry. Straight ahead he goes down to the 21-yard line and stop there. Three minutes exactly now remaining in the first half of play. Halftime, we'll have our talk show, 2719322, the number to call. If you live outside the Greenville area, call collect. 803-2719322. We'll be answering your questions at halftime. And hopefully we'll have an update from Columbus, Ohio on the progress of the Michigan-Ohio State game. We're anticipating a call from there. Dwight Clark goes wide to the left side at second down six Tigers. This time it is Fuller keeping, turning up field. Now is fighting his way forward to the 15-yard line, and down he goes there as Lou Biondi comes across to make the defensive play for South Carolina. Well, Ken, I've referred to it as a low-key campaign, Steve Fuller for Heisman. I think it's been just that. No one has really stepped to the fore and done anything to really aid this young man nationally. 
But if he does not typify the young type of person you would want as a Heisman winner, I don't know who does. He's an outstanding student. He has integrity and great abilities. And what a leader he is. Here is the give this time off to Perry straight ahead. First down as he carries into about the 11 yard line. Andy Hastings, Bill Janice there. I was a bit perturbed earlier this week when Steve Atkins of Maryland was awarded the back of the week at the ACC. Someone had told me that you had made a, a, a comment about that publicly and uh, I was upset. Guy like Fuller leads his team from behind on three occasions on foreign soil that afternoon to victory. And All right, it's at the 11. First down. This time it is Fuller keeping once again. He's into about the six yard line. That long body lean of Steve Fuller. Brett Bond wrapped him up back around the nine, but Steve leans forward to the six. So he gets about five yards. It'll be, well, they've marked it at the seven, make it a four yard pickup. It'll be second down. He's run the ball already more this this afternoon. He has last couple of ball games. Steve wants to talk it over along the sidelines now. Clock shows a minute nine remaining here in the first half of play. And with time out on the field, the score Tigers 21, South Carolina 14. Starting back on their own seven yard line after a clip on the kickoff. And here they are at this point, deep down in uh, Gamecock territory, leading 21 14. This is their second really offensive thrust of the afternoon. The other uh, touchdowns came after some turnovers by the Gamecocks. The Gamecocks did not panic. They came storming right back and put points of their own on the board. So, uh, wow, don't you go away from your radio. You stick right where you are. Steve Fuller has been over talking with the coaching staff and now he goes back and uh, leans in calls the guys in now and they say this is very important for the minute nine to go that we punch this thing in here. All right. Out they come second down six ball at the seven yard line. Butler is wide to the right side. Fuller has them in the eye. Steve takes out this time. Rising. Perry for the touchdown. And the Tigers move on top 27 to 14 as we'll have Obed Ariri come on to try and point after now. Billy Lott to hold. A minute six remains here in the half and a big hole opened up over the right side for Perry that time. Steve Kenny and Joe Bostic blew them out of there. Ariri's kick is up. His kick is good, and with time out on the field, the score, Tigers 28, South Carolina 14. Perry touchdown now from seven yards out and a Reary PAT. Tigers out front 28 14. And uh, there's still a minute six to go. We may see something else happen in this ball game as a Reary tees it up, gets ready to kick it off to the game cops. The way it's been going, anything could happen, no question. Johnny Wright is to the near side, Zion McKinney to the far side, and up the middle, Horace Smith, the try returnees for North or for South Carolina. Whoops. Well, that's fatal to say North Carolina about this team, isn't it? Over to Reary has it on the tee. Waiting the whistle now. A minute six remaining in the half. Reary approaches the football high end over end. 
Smith will back up five into the end zone. He'll touch it down there. It'll come out to the 20, and that's where it'll be placed down first and 10 Gamecocks. As the Tigers have come back now after South Carolina moved to within seven at 21-14, the Tigers push another one in as Tracy Perry went the final six yards. And it is a 28-14 football game at the moment. I think it's important for the Gamecocks that they do not panic at this point because they're still in the ball game. They just play a game plan. Harper, Rogers, and Wright in the backfield. Wide to the right side, Bailey. Harper splits them now. Takes out, gives off to George Rogers. Indy goes to the middle of the line, and down he goes right around the 20 or 21. Jim Stuckey was the first to get up in there and hit George Rogers. Clock now shows 53 seconds remaining. Down below 50 seconds remaining in the half. It's at 21, second down and nine. Obvious the Gamecocks are not interested in trying to do a whole lot in this, uh, this area. They're just going to let it kind of run on out. Out they come again. They send Zion McKinney split off right end. They bring Smith wide to the left. Harper sets them in the eye. Now they go split in the backfield. Rogers to the right side, right to the left side. The, on a draw to right, out over the 30, out to the 35, and down at the 37-yard line. Steve Ryan is there with Eddie Gathers. But Johnny Wright on a draw play that time gets the first down as he carries out to the 40 or 37-yard line, and he apparently injured his left shoulder. Or it would appear that's what he's favoring out there. Johnny Wright, the sophomore from Fort Myers, Florida, being attended to it. Maybe the elbow that they're looking at now, we get word. He came in here with a, a net of 839 yards, 5.1 per carry on the season. Spencer Clark has moved in to replace him. I'll tell you, Wright's in some kind of pain. He started to trot off, and it doubled him over again before he could get to the sidelines. 19 seconds remains in the first half. 28 to 14 football game Tigers on top but it's been a typical classic battle between these two clubs here this afternoon Clemson with 21 points in the first quarter South Carolina added 14 in the second and then the Tigers came back with seven more just a few seconds ago you know, I think you might can uh, say now 11 Saturday afternoons later that uh, Mr. Harper is no longer a sophomore too he is a, an experienced quarterback who really took some fire not just on the field, but he took some flack off the field, and he has weathered it well, and he has come back to be quite a field general for the Gamecocks. Tell you what, reminds me a lot of Steve Fuller a couple of years ago in his sophomore season. Absolutely. My friend. Balls at the 37-yard line of South Carolina. They have it first and 10. We have 19 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Wide to the right side, Zion McKinney flanks out. Harry Harper at quarterback sets them down. Takes out, is dropping to throw. He is looking, firing deep down the right side. This one is going to be picked off. Rex Barnes got it. 30, swinging to his right behind some blocks now, up over the 35 to the 40. Barnes at midfield, down the sideline, and all the way down to the 32-yard line. That stops the clock with three seconds remaining in the half. The ball was overthrown. And Rex Barn picks it off and back around the 34-yard line of the Tigers, an injured Randy Scott is being attended to right now. Trying to see where he got hurt, Jim, and uh, don't see it. Well, Randy is down back around the 34 of the Tigers. The football is at the 32-yard line of the Gamecocks, and Obed O'Reary will come on to attempt a field goal of 49 yards. Billy Lott will be holding. Right now, Charlie Pell is going to go out and check on the condition of linebacker Randy Scott as they have taken a lot of time. And John Brooks and Bubba Brown, two of Scott's teammates, are both out there. This is a closely knit group of ball players, and uh, they are highly concerned about not only a teammate but a friend. And he's getting up. He's going to be all right. They've got him in a sitting position now. Mr. Varn enjoys playing against the Gamecocks, too. Uh, well, he's like the grandson of Rex Henry. <laughs> That's right. And uh, All right, Randy's coming to his feet now. Looked like for a minute Rex might have had him another one of those long touchdown interceptions. I'll tell you, it was beginning to set up. Uh, it started to set up to the right side. This, this, this crowd for Randy Scott. 
And he's walking briskly now. And that's a good sign because he's a competitor. And we're going to get a field goal attempt of 49 yards now by Obed Ariri from the left hash mark. Billy Lott will hold with three seconds remaining in the half. And we await the snap. Spot. Kick up. Kick's got the distance. Kick is good. hits a 49-yard field goal as the clock runs out. And we have reached the end of the first half of play, the score here at the Valley. Clemson 31, South Carolina 14. This afternoon, and what another 30 minutes of excitement we do expect as these two teams go at it head-to-head. Obed Ariri will place it on the tee now as dropping back is Johnny Wright to the far side. Horace Smith up the middle and Zion McKinney to the near side for South Carolina. Ariri approaches the football. It's a squibber down the left side and out of bounds around the 14 or 15 yard line. So likely South Carolina will ask Obed to back it up to the 35 and kick it all over again. He did some of that last week up in Maryland, didn't he? He did. <laughs> I wondered how he kept the leg from getting overly tired the way he was kicking last week. But Obed put on that big smile and tickles me to hear him talk. You know, he's from Nigeria and he just got a little bit of that Nigerian ease. I don't know whether that's correct or not, but stumbles around a bit with the language. <laughs> that's close enough. I mean, shoot, I've never been there. I don't know. He speaks our language better than I speak his. Well, that's a fact. <laughs> you better believe that. <laughs> Did I hear something here a moment ago that the Clemson soccer teams moved out in front of St. Francis one to nothing? Yeah, about a minute to go, or uh, about 30 minutes to go. All right, again, it's going to be McKinney to the near side, right to the far side, and Smith up the middle, and Ariri approaches the football. This time hits it high end over end. Horace Smith will wait for it, gather it in at the 6. He's at the 10, the 15. Out to about the 18, and down he goes at the 18-yard line, and there's a flag. We have a face mask tackle, I believe. Jeff Sewell was the first down there and had him around the leg, but I think someone came up a little late and perhaps got him by the face mask. I'll discuss it now, and I believe will likely walk off 15 against the Tigers, which will march it upfield to about the 33-yard line. That's what's going to happen. Now, let's take a look out there at linebacker. Is Randy Scott back in? Yes, Randy is okay and is lined up at linebacker for the Tigers. He had gone out late in that first half, just before Obed kicked the 49-yard field goal. Gary Harper, George Rogers, Johnny Wright in the eye as South Carolina has the football now at their own 33-yard line. First and 10, we're just into the second half of play. And lined up wide to the left is John Bailey. Harper up under center. They work from a split backfield now as they shift. Harper gives off to Rogers. Big hole, but he is banged down as he gets out to the 35. Jim Stuckey came across on a slant that time and knocked Rogers off balance and down at the 35-yard line. Call it the 36. It'll be a gain of three. Thought you'd stop him. Sorry, I haven't answered a question you asked about uh, halftime. Uh, net yards gained in a career at Clemson. The Conway Comet. Buddy Gore. Conway Comet. Huh? 25-71. Well, that answers the question. Clemson's all-time leading rusher. Appreciate the fans who called in at halftime during the course of the season. It was a lot of fun. Here is Johnny Wright. Big hole. He's at the 40 midfield and into the 48-yard line of the Tigers before John Brooks can come across and knock him down. But it's a first down game, Cox, and they just keep battling back here this afternoon as they have fought their way into Tiger territory now at the 48-yard line. But he went off holding a, a shoulder or an arm. I wasn't sure we'd see him again this afternoon. I know Zion McKinney goes wide to the left side. They bring John Bailey, a flanker, to the right. Now McKinney lines up as a tight end left. High formation in behind Harper at quarterback. Pitch back. Wright fumbles the ball on the pitch back but gets it back. And then is knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Rich Tootin and Tony Williams, who were quick to get to him. Wright mishandling the ball a little bit on that quick pitch back, but gathered it in and got back to the line of scrimmage, where it'll be second down and 10 now for South Carolina. Out goes Willie Scott. Ben Cornett has checked in now at tight end. Zion McKinney will go to the left side. Cornett lines up tight on the right side. 
And Horace Smith, who caught a touchdown pass in the second quarter, is a flanker to the right side as Harper sets them in the eye, drops to throw, looking over the middle and firing. This one is caught by Cornette. Up across the 40, into the 34. That's Johnny Wright out of the backfield, not Cornette. Cornette, the tight end, had dragged across. And then Wright, behind him, gathers it in. It's a first down at the Tiger 34-yard line, where Bubba Brown made the tackle. So South Carolina on the move now. A 31-14 football game. The Tigers have the lead, but these two battle on. What a great football game it's been. Horace Smith wide to the left side. This time, George Rogers into about the 31-yard line. Knocked down there by Randy Scott and Bubba Brown. 63,479 here at the Valley this afternoon. And Ken, at last report we heard, there were some 4,000 who had gathered over at Little John to watch this on closed circuit television. We want to say hi to those folks over there. And I hope that they're enjoying the game as well. Wide to the right side, John Bailey. Split backfield. Harper at quarterback takes out. Keeps, pitches out on the corner. That is Wright, who is down to the 25-yard line and mowed down there by John Brooks and Rex Varn. And he is going to be in close to a first down. Let's see where they spot the football. Up, it's going to be right at the 25, so he'll be about a half a yard shy. Jim, a couple of times this afternoon on a couple of drives, not a couple of times, but a lot of plays, the Gamecock line has worked on the Tiger defensive line as well as anybody we have seen this year, and better than most. The ball at the 25-yard line, third down on the yard for the Gamecocks. Wide left goes John Bailey. Harper lines them up in the eye. Big third down play. Harper keeps first down as he's across the 25 to about the 23-yard line. Quarterback keep and Harper knocked down by Randy Scott, Jim Stuckey, and Bubba Brown. But the Gamecocks with a first down in at the Tiger 23-yard line. Boy, these are a couple of football teams that are after each other here this afternoon. 11.38 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Wide left goes John Bailey. Eye formation behind Harper at quarterback. Split backfield now as they shift out of the eye. This time Harper keeping. He's at the 20. He's at the 15. At the 10 and down to the 9-yard line goes Gary Harper. Dragging Tigers with him. Steve Gibbs and Rex Barn finally haul him down. But Gary Harper, the sophomore quarterback, carries inside the 10 to the 9-yard line where it's first and goal for the Gamecocks. He just broke a tackle in the backfield, got away, and was gone. Kind of picked his way through there. Soccer score, 17 minutes to go. Clemson now 2-0 over St. Francis. That's in the NCAA soccer quarterfinals at New York. Out comes South Carolina at the 9-yard line of the Tigers. First down and goal, Gamecocks. Zion McKinney wing to the right side. Split backfield. McKinney in motion to the left. Harper takes out. This is Rogers sweeping wide to his left, and he's down around the six-yard line. Getting to him was Bubba Rollins. They sent McKinney in motion. That made him the lead man blocking out there for Rogers. But Rollins sifted through and made the defensive play for the Tigers. And they will spot the football at the six-yard line. Second down and goal, South Carolina. Ten and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter of play. Two football teams that really want it here this afternoon. John Bailey, wide to the right side, now moves in as a wing. High formation, split backfield. That's Bailey in motion. This time, Harper is back to throw, looking into the end zone, firing incomplete for Willie Scott, his tight end. Bubba Rollins was with him. Scott was open that time, but Harper released it just a little high to him, and as he went up into the air to try and make the catch, missed connections. And it will now become third down and goal from the six-yard line of the Tigers. Sure was a good call. They had been uh, staying on the ground, staying on the ground, and uh, gee, he was open enough. Harper was just running a bit, threw it a little over. All right, it's third and goal now. McKinney comes wide to the right side. Eye formation behind Harper at quarterback. Split backfield as they shift out of the eye. This time it is Rogers getting the call, and he's down to the three, but he has stopped at the three-yard line as Bubba Brown and Tony Williams are up defensively for the Tigers. And we may get a field goal attempt here now. It is going to be Britt Parrish coming on for South Carolina. So the Tiger defense denying South Carolina the touchdown. The Gamecocks will now attempt to get three. 
Holding will be Swinehart. Parrish to attempt a field goal of 20 yards. The kick is up. The kick is good. So there is time out of the field. The score here at the Valley. Tigers 31, South Carolina 17. minutes and 38 seconds to go here in the uh, third period. Tigers lead it now 31-17. The Gamecocks took it at their own 33-yard line and 12 plays later Parrish punched it in a 20-yard field goal. 9.38 to go and uh, it's still uh, a lot of ball game. Kickoff time again. Tigers have Jordan and Ratchford deep. Parrish is going to tee it up on the hash mark on the near side. Both these kickers like to kind of kick to the corners, Jim, and maybe it's been, I know it's been very successful for the Tigers. Maybe for the Gamecocks, too, this year. Tell you one thing, anyone who thinks that this football game is over, <laughs> I guarantee you, these are two teams who want to get it downfield and score with it if they possibly can. Britt Parrish approaches the football now, kicks a flat one this time that bounces once into the arms of Ratchford at the 10. He's got blockers at the 15 to the 20, 25, and out to the 30-yard line comes Warren Ratchford, and they will mark it at the 30, and that's where the Tigers will take over first and 10. 9.33 remaining in the third quarter of play. Clemson 31, South Carolina 17, and here's an update on the report from Columbus, Ohio. They have now moved into the third quarter, well, late in the third quarter, and Michigan still leading the Buckeyes by a score of 7-3. to three. Another great rivalry going on there, and of course the loser of that game meets the Tigers in the Gator Bowl. Here's Tracy Perry powering over right tackle straight ahead to about the 35-yard line before he is knocked down. Steve Burnish up defensively. I've checked that. That was not Tracy Perry, but Marvin Sims, who was a fullback for the Tigers. Tigers got 96 yards out of their fullback uh, position in that first half. Wide left comes Jerry Butler. Anthony King lines up tight to the left side. of Abreu is a tight end right eye formation behind Fuller quarterback. That's Sims and Brown. This time, Steve Keeping pitching out on the corner to Lester. Lester away at the 40, 45, midfield, 45, 40, and down to about the 38-yard line. Brett Bond finally brings Lester Brown down, but he finds the corner behind a good block by Jerry Butler. And has carried in to the 43-yard line of the Gamecocks, where it's a first and 10 Tigers. He had 62 yards in the first half, Jim. He's coming out and getting a rest. Goggins going in. Lost a big portion of his jersey on that last play, and so Harold Goggins has replaced him at tailback now. This sends Jerry Butler wide to the right side. Fuller at quarterback has them in the eye. Out it comes. This time, Sam's big hole, 30, 25, 20-yard 20 line. Marvin Sims bursting over the right side behind the Bostics. And it's another first down, Tigers. The ball in at the 20-yard line of the Gamecocks. Boy, they just pinched down on him that time and opened it up for Marvin Sims. Perlow and Hastings were up defensively. Ball is spotted at the 19-yard line. Again, Jerry Butler wide to the right. And again, Lester Brown has moved in at tailback. Steve Fuller at quarterback, up under center, takes out. Once more, gives off to Marvin Sims. He lost the football on a scramble for it, and I think Billy Hudson falls on it around the 18-yard line. Here's a flag going down now. A little late. And we may have a personal foul here called against someone. A Gamecock looked very unhappy down there. Personal foul against South Carolina is the call. So a little late extracurricular activity. Somebody just came in and stripped it for Marvin, but Hudson on it. Now the penalty on top of that. Well, that's going to move the football now down to the eight-yard line. 
And that's going to give it a first and goal situation for the Tigers. Carolina cer certainly did not need that at that particular time. Well, they marked it at the nine yard line. First down and goal for the Tigers now. They're leading 31 to 17 with 8.20 remaining in the third quarter. Butler goes wide to the right side. Fuller at quarterback sets them down in the eye. This time, keeping, rolling to his right, pitch out. Lester Brown, he's thrown for a loss back at the 11 yard line as Lou Biondi was there. Steve had two options eat it and go down for a loss or pitch back to Lester, who would be thrown for a loss. And that's exactly what he did. Well, we knew that Steve was a smart young man anyway. <laughs> Unload that thing. Well, the game got defense, to their credit, strung it out very well that time. There was not much of an option left for quarterback Steve Fuller. A few other scores here at the half. North Carolina State's leading Virginia 17 to 7. An ACC game today. Fuller takes out. This time, keeping, rolling to his left, turns up field, gets into about the six yard line, and down he goes there. And Steve is upset, felt that he was hit with a face mask tackle, but the official on the play did not throw the flag, and Steve jumps up and jumps in his face about it. Yep, pretty obvious he had a good reason mm. to complain, I would say. Yeah, I would say it was just a missed call altogether. Well, after all, the official didn't have too good an angle. He was only looking him in the eye. Halftime score, Duke 9, North Carolina 3. Third down, goal, ball at the seven-yard line. J.B. Butler goes wide to the right side. Fuller in the eye, has them down now. Steve takes out, back to throw over the middle. Butler, a little high, threw it a little high for J.B. on the post. He had his man beat, that was Sanford. And we have a delay of game now called against the Tigers before that play got off anyhow. A delay of game prior to the play, which will cost them five. It'll back it up. There'll be no opportunity to decline the penalty and take the play because delay of game, of course, constitutes the fact that time ran out before they got the play off, and so there was no play in fact at all. Abreu gets in. Cliff Bray comes out. Terry Butler going wide to the right side. Now the officials step in once again and slow things down. They want to set that yard marker, down marker along the sidelines. It's all the way back to the 13-yard line. And third down and goal for the Tigers. 6.52 remains here in the third quarter of play. Another score, Tennessee 10, Kentucky 6, the half. Ball at the 12 yard line where they've marked it. Butler goes wide to the right side now. Tigers on third and goal, backed up to the 12. Fuller back to throw. Looking, firing a swing pass for Lester Brown at the 10. Gets down to about the seven and out of bounds he goes at the seven yard line. Biondi chased him down there. And now over to Reary will come on and try a field goal. Billy Lott will be holding. Obed is one for two on the afternoon. He hit a 49-yarder as the clock was running out in the first half. He'll try this one, a 23-yard effort. The ball will be spotted by Lott at the 13. The kick is up. The kick is good. So there was time out on the field. With 6.40 remaining in the third quarter, the score, Tigers 34, South Carolina 17. plays after an Ariri field goal of 23 yards. The Tigers now lead by a score of 34-17 with 6.40 to go in the third quarter. And it's kickoff time once more for Ariri. The Gamecocks certainly haven't given up. They come storming back every time the Tigers do something and get on the board themselves. Jim, was something I wanted to mention. Very few passes this year from the Tigers to a back 
and I was trying to uh, look in there and see what I might could find as far as receiving is concerned. Uh, Lester Brown and Ratchford uh, had uh, caught a few, and that's about it. And that one helps help get them a little closer. All right, Johnny Wright goes to the far side. Smith up the middle. Zion McKinney to the near side. As Ariri approaches the football, a high end over end kick. McKinney waiting for it a yard into the end zone. He'll touch it down there. It'll come out to the 20, and that's where it'll be placed first and 10 as the Gamecocks take over. The 640 remains here in the third quarter of play. 34 and 17. Tigers out on top in this traditional battle here at the Valley before 63,000. 479 fans. What a crowd and what an afternoon for football. No earlier, no deeper in the end zone than that earlier in the game. They have been running those out of there, Jim. Steve Dorsey and Spencer Clark are in the backfield now behind Harper. Wide to the right side comes Horace Smith. They split in the backfield. The pitch back. This is Dorsey swinging wide to the right. Hamden gets away to the 25, 26, and down he goes at the 26-yard line. As Ogden Hansford forces him down. Jeff Davis was also there defensively. He's in at a linebacker. John Brooks. Check that lineup. John Brooks, Jim Stuckey on the left side of the line. Randy Scott and Jeff Davis are at the linebackers. Underwood is at a corner on the right side, or Gaither's at a corner. Underwood at safety. Second down four. Split backfield. Harper takes out this time. Keeping, turning back upfield, nowhere to go. He's hit around the 28-yard line. Tony Williams and Jim Stuckey were there defensively for the Tigers. So mark it again at the 28-yard line, where it now becomes third down and two for South Carolina. I don't know where it came from in their, their previous play. I wanted to mention that Underwood cut down an, a blocker in the, in the backfield the Gamecocks from a safety position. Horace Smith wide to the left side. McKinney is flanked to the right. Split backfield. Harper, third and two. Rides it off. This time it is going to be a first down as Spencer Clark never gave up. Kept driving forward. Charlie Bauman finally brings him down as he crosses the 30 to the 33-yard line. Good job by Spencer Clark as he was hemmed in back around the 29 but kept driving the legs and moves for a first down at the 33. So South Carolina with the football, first and ten. A Tiger very close to a late hit on that one, but it was not called. Willie Scott has checked in at tight end now. Horace Smith goes wide to the left side. Harper sets them down in the eye. Now they split. This time, it is a reverse. McKinney is back to throw on that uh, halfback reverse, and he's going deep. And this one is going to be incomplete. Down around the 20-yard line, Eddie Gethers was with the intended receiver, Horace Smith, all the way, and the ball was bounced around out of Gethers' hands into Smith's hands, out of Gethers into Smith's, and out of everyone's. But for a moment, it was a bit hairy out there, I guarantee you. Hey, can McKinney throw it a long way? Zion from Pickens. Almost threw it to Pickens that time. <laughs> Looked like a center fielder uh, throwing it into home. All right, wide left goes Smith. Zion McKinney splits off right end. Gamecocks shift into a split backfield. The ride this time is off to Dorsey. Straight ahead he goes, gets out to about the 38-yard line and down there. Up defensively was Jeff Davis from linebacker. So it's going to be a third down now for South Carolina. Third down and four yards to go. Third and four, ball at the 38-yard line. Wide left goes McKinney. Smith splits off right end. Harper takes out, dropping the throw. Looking over the middle. Being rushed, now flips incomplete, intended for Spencer Clark. But a good rush coming that time from Steve Durham. And the Gamecocks will have to punt the football. You know, there have not been many punts this afternoon. No, they haven't. I'll tell you something else. Credit Durham. Big on that one. Durham with the pres uh, pressure. Okay. Punts. First half. One each. Runninger back to punt. Willie Jordan backed up deep for the Tigers. 34-17. Clemson with the lead. 4.38 remaining. Third quarter. Awaiting the snap back. There it is. 
Kick away. Oh, he has nailed a beauty. A high, high spiral. Jordan will ask for a fair catch, gathers it in at the 21-yard line, and that's where the Tigers will take over the football, first and 10 after the 42-yard punt by Max Runniger. Not only was it long, but it was up in the air, plenty of coverage. They lead the nation in uh, are tied for with three or four others at 40.9 net. So they're getting almost no returns on uh, Runniger's punting. Coach Carlin says he's got to be the best in the country. All right, Tigers with the football now, leading 34 to 17. They have it at their own 21-yard line. Jerry Butler comes wide to the left side as Steve Fuller sets them down in the eye. Lester Brown, the tail back. That's Tracy Perry, straight ahead over right tackle, crunches his way out near the 25 and is pulled down there by W.T. Williams, the middle guard for South Carolina. Pick up of about four. It'll be second down and six with the ball at the 25-yard line. Tracy's probably having his best game of the season this afternoon. He had a good one last week against Maryland, I thought. Ran with a great amount of enthusiasm. Punishing runner. Butler wide to the left side as Fuller again sets them down in the eye. Takes out. This time, Steve is keeping. Now having to struggle to get back to the line of scrimmage. Just gets back and is met there by Roger Wolbright. In fact, lost a yard on the play back to the 24-yard line. Will brought another one of those uh, young men from uh, down at uh, Chapin High School. Remember Marty well. All right, Butler wide to the left. Clark goes into a slot on the left side now as the Tigers are faced with third down and six. And Fuller is back to throw. Looking for Clark, now having to roll out of there. Steve going to run downfield and gets out to about the 29, and that'll be it as he is knocked down at the 29-yard line by Wolbright once again. He was looking for Clark on that fly pattern, but Clark well covered at a good rush coming from the Gamecock defensive line. Let's see if they come with a rush here now. Uh, Sims is backed up to punt. Has the snap, the rush is on, but he gets it away, and he has nailed a beauty over the heads of everyone. Hits at the 20, to the 10, to the 5, and is going to be down in the end zone. Oh. Whomever went downfield, is that Harold Goggins? He made a dive for the ball. And he thought yeah. he had it around the 1, but he slipped on into the end zone with it. But what a punt of 71 yards by David Sims. I don't believe a, a, a punt like that. I'll tell you, Horace Smith was back, and he had to turn and take off full steam, and it was still over his head. What a punt. All right, South Carolina with the football at their own 20-yard line. Bailey is wide to the right side. Harper this time keeping, pitching back. This is right. Comes out across the 20 to the 23, and a down he goes there as Steve Durham and John Brooks are up defensively for the Tigers. 34-17, Clemson on top with two and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter of play. You know, the only break the Gamecocks have had this afternoon is the fact that that punt went into the end zone. That's about their only break this afternoon. Oh, that's right. Their two fumbles already were very costly in this football game. Wide to the left side goes John Bailey. Harper again sets them down. Split backfield now. Right and Rogers. Rogers with a pitch back. Sweeps to his left. Comes up over the 25 and down at about the 27-yard line. As Steve Gibbs, defensive end on the right side, is there to make the play. So the Gamecocks now will face with a third and three. The ball at the 27-yard line. We're down to a minute 50 remaining in the third quarter of play. Beautiful, perfect football weather. Sunshiny skies, clear weather. 63,000 plus here at the Valley. Another 4,000 of Little John watching on closed circuit television. Harper takes out on third and three. Back to throw over the middle. Completes this one to the 29, but a good defensive play by Steve Gibbs, the defensive end, who did a beautiful job of bringing down the tight end, Willie Scott, shy of the first down. That's staying home. You often hear about a back knowing just how far he needs to get a receiver to get that uh, first down. That was a case of a defensive player knowing how far he needed to keep him from going. He knew exactly where he had to put him down. Runniger's on the putt. Willie Jordan's backed up. We await the snap now. Back it comes. Here's the kick. 
Got it away, and boy, he has nailed another beauty. High, 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 downfield. Hits out of bounds inside the 30. Let's get the angle on it now. It's going to be spotted at the 35-yard line of the Tigers. And that's where they'll put it in play first and 10, a punt of 36 yards. And Clemson now with the football once again, taking over at their own 35 after Steve Gibbs came up with the clutch defensive play that time. 50 seconds remaining, third quarter. Wide left comes Jerry Butler. Steve Fuller setting them in the eye. Fuller up under center now, takes out, this time riding it off. That is Marvin Sims crunching straight ahead, getting out to about the 40-yard line where he is pulled down. Defensively, Steve Burnish is there with Bill Janis. Mark the football at the 40. 30 seconds now remaining in the third quarter. Tigers on top, 34-17 in the football game. Butler is wide to the left side. Full of a quarterback taking out, dropping to throw, looking, firing over the middle for J.B. He's got it at the 45 of South Carolina, and down he goes. First down, Tigers. Robert Perlow was there, but J.B. came open on the post over the middle, and Steve hits him beautifully for a first down at the 45 of the Gamecocks with 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Now the clock rolls. They may not get off another play this quarter. In fact, I don't think they want to. They're going to let the clock run down. And we have reached the end of the third quarter with the score here at the Valley after three quarters of play. Clemson 34, South Carolina 17. Perlote and Biondi finally drag him down at the 26. You know, if you're a defensive uh, lineman or a linebacker, and they change fullbacks on you, you say, well, I get a break here. But how can you tell the difference between Sims and Perry pounding at you with this good blocking up front? Wide to the right side comes Jerry Butler. High formation behind Steve Fuller at quarterback. Marvin Sims and Lester Brown. Again, Marvin Sims gets the call. He's into the sixth here, the 21-yard line where he is pulled down. Five-yard pickup once again for the big junior fullback. Chris Dolce was out blocking in front. Fred Sinclair and W.T. Williams up defensively for the Gamecocks. Football marked at the 21-yard line. It's second down, five yards to go, Tigers. They're leading 34-17. to 17. Jerry Butler goes wide to the left side. Again, the Tigers are in the eye. Fuller up under center once again. Takes out. Again. This time keeping. Fake the handoff and keeps to the 10 to the five yard line. He put it in the belly of his fullback Marvin Sims. I thought he had it but Steve took it out and carries all the way down to the five where it's first and goal beyond the again there defensively for the game cuts. So much his own effort. End of three quarters Michigan 14 Ohio State three. First and goal, Tigers at the five. Out in the power eye they come now. Tracy Perry representing the strength to the left side. Fuller keeping, gets back to the five, and that's all as he is hit down there by Roger Wolbright. So at the five-yard line, it'll be second down and goal for the Tigers. We're just into the fourth quarter with 12.40 remaining. You know, I want to bring up something else. We've been talking about the running of these fullbacks. These two fullbacks will also block. That accounts for a lot of the yardage that Lester Brown has gotten this year. Here's a final in the NCAA quarterfinals in soccer. Clemson wins over St. Francis 4 to nothing to advance to the semifinals. Power eye formation. Lester Brown straight ahead to about the two-yard line. And down he goes there. Brown over the left side gets it into the two where it now will become third down and goal. Stevie Lee and Mark Bridges were there defensively for the Gamecocks. So it's at the two. It is third down and goal for Clemson. They're leading 34 to 17 over the Gamecocks. A crowd in excess of 63,000 is gathered here. The newly opened upper deck. 
inaugurated this afternoon. Lester Brown over the left side did not get it. In fact, lost a football. And let's see a scramble for it now. And who's got it? A lot of diving in there. The Gamecocks say they've got the football. Lester was hit hard. Nope. Dunson got it back. But once again, they're going to have to settle for an attempt at three, I believe. Unless the Tigers decide to go for it. It will be fourth down and goal. I believe they may go for it. Steve Fuller going to call for a timeout. They'll discuss it along the sidelines. So we've got timeout on the field. The score, Clemson 34, South Carolina 17. Four seventeen, eleven thirty-eight to go. The Tigers threatening a decision to make right here. Do you go for three? Do you go for the six? This is something they are uh, going to have to decide and are doing down there right now at the Tiger bench. If you think there's not some hitting going on out there, then you are really uh, in for a shock <laughs> because uh, there are some uh, there's some some head knockings going on out there on that field this afternoon. And all of it is not real, real friendly either, especially on that fumble just now between Dulcie and uh, one of the Gamecocks. Tigers going for it, Jim. Well, they're going to go after it. They want the big six. It's at the two-yard line. It's fourth down and goal. Let's see if they get it. Look at a balloon over here, King. That's a big one. It sure is. What's it that say? Some paints. All right, Lester Brown. Touchdown! Lester Brown with his 17th touchdown on the air. What a job the right side of the offensive line did. In goes Lester. And the Tigers move on top 40 to 17 over the Gamecocks. Well, I would say that that is confidence in your offensive line when Steve Fuller comes to the sidelines and says he wants to go for the downs rather than the three. Here's a Reary's kick. It's good. Time out on the field. The score, Tigers 41, Gamecock 17. Five yards, 11 plays. The Tigers lead it now, 41-17. And uh, coming into the game, Lester Brown had uh, 14 touchdowns. He has three today. He was eighth in the nation. So uh, we don't know how many he might have passed as he gone along, uh, depending on what people at Cornell, Auburn, Oklahoma, LSU, and all of those guys have done uh, this afternoon. But Lester now has certainly set a standard that Tiger scorers will be looking to to uh, meet for years to come with 17 because uh, 1950 this record had stood for a long long time 102 points and all of them on the ground for Lester Brown this year what a season it's been Boy, that huge hot air balloon is something that is just an added addition to the color here today McKinney grabs the kick off at the one up to the five to the ten to the 15 gets away to the 20 25 30 and wrestled out of bounds across the way at the 32 yard line Zion McKinney pulled down by J.D. Haglin and South Carolina takes over the football first and ten as they will mark it at the Gamecock 31 yard line 41 17 Tigers leading with 11 24 remaining you know Jim uh, the way things are going for the Gamecocks he fumbled he was out of bounds but he fumbled the ball even then. Out comes South Carolina now. They bring Horace Smith wide to the left side as Gary Harper sets them down in the eye. They split in the backfield now. Harper takes out. 
Rides it off. First man through. George Rogers. Big hole. He's across the midfield stripe into Tiger territory at the 40. 35 and all the way down to the 30-yard line. And that is why George Rogers is the great running back that he is. He has the strength and he has the quickness. At that time, he burst over the right side and carried into the Tiger 31 before he was pulled down. Boy, he just walked away from Willie Jordan out there. Ran through it, didn't he? First and 10 Gamecocks. This one's not over by a long shot. Horace Smith is wide to the left side. They're in the eye. Gary Harper splits them in the backfield now. Takes out. Rides it off. That is right. Johnny straight ahead carries to the 25-yard line and is knocked down there by Bubba Brown. Johnny arrives the ball carrier. Can as you look out, that balloon now is filling up with a little more hot air or gas or whatever because it's climbing higher into the sky. That's an amazing sight. It's a brave person who does that. I'd like to be there right now. If I weren't here. <laughs> Harper brings them out. Split backfield behind him. Smith wide to the left side. This time the pitch out on the corner. That is right. He is hemmed in and going to be knocked down around the 24-yard line. Good job defensively that time by the Tigers as coming up was Bill Smith who was in at that left end defensively and they marked it at the 23-yard line where it now becomes third down and two yards to go for South Carolina. Ten minutes, three seconds remaining in the football game. 41-17, Tigers on top. Horace Smith wide to the left side. Gary Harper sets his team down. Up under center he goes. Takes out. This time is riding it off to Rogers. He is through for a first down as he crosses the 20 to the 18-yard line. Caught there by Randy Scott. Now Steve Durham is checking in. Jeff Bryant getting in for the Tigers. Rich Tootin back in. So the two tackles and middle guard switching now. Out comes South Carolina. Horace Smith flanked to the left side as Gary Harper sets them in the eye. It's first and 10 at the Tiger 18-yard line. This time, the ride off to George Rogers again. Over left tackle, he booms inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. Caught there by Jeff Bryant, defensive tackle. Tell you one thing, Rogers uh, does not know his team is way, way behind or that he should be tired or anything else. He is pounding into the line, lifting those knees high. I'll tell you, the way this one's been played this afternoon, you're not way behind, regardless of whom you are at this moment. Here is the ride this time to Johnny Wright. He's over the 10 to the 9-yard line, and he'll be close to a first down for the Gamecocks. Steve Durham was up defensively with Bubba Brown. They unstack and uh, spot the football at the nine. It'll be shy of a first down, but not by much. So it's third down and inches now for South Carolina. Here in the fourth quarter with 8.30 remaining. 41-17, Tigers have the lead. Wide to the right side goes Horace Smith. Gary Harper sets them down in the eye. Takes out. Harper keeps, goes straight ahead. Did he get enough? Did he lose the football? I, I thought he came out of there minus the football the first time. Well, they're going to unstack them once again and see what happens. Tigers had about eight men up front that time. Long time unstacking down here, and they're going to spot the football now. They've marked it. You think he's got it, Ken? No, I don't. Well, Cliff don't Phillips, think... the spotter, says he thinks first down. You and Sack Bagley both indicate you think it's not first down. Let's see who's correct. Let those fellows with the chain sticks come in and get a little closer look at it. No, they he didn't get it. it. Missed it by three or four inches. That's right. So it'll be fourth down now, and the Gamecocks surely will have to go for it here. Fourth and inches for the Gamecocks. They're in at the Tiger nine-yard line. 41-17, Clemson on top. And now Tiger fans come to their feet as Gary Harper moves up under quarterback or up under center at quarterback. A little bit of stuttering out there in the Tiger defense. The ride off to Rogers. He's got the first down as he cracks into about the eight-yard line. And when Rogers went down, he had that ball dangerously high hanging out there in one hand. 
So it's at the eight where it's first and goal for the Gamecocks now. Sheriff Brown, please beat Ricky Wallace at game one. Sheriff Brown, please beat Ricky They get in for a score here, Ken. You can certainly look for an onside kick, I would think. High formation behind Harper at quarterback now. Takes out, rides it off. This is Johnny Wright. He's at the five, and down he goes at the five-yard line. He is hit there by Bubba Brown from right linebacker and Tony Williams from right defensive tackle. Well, they're, they're still mixing it up down there, Jim. Uh, although uh, Rogers is the man that, that carried them, they still try to go to right. They don't want them keying on Rogers, but so far, even I think maybe occasionally they have keyed and haven't stopped him. All right, it's at the five-yard line. He's an outstanding back. No question. John Bailey is wide to the left side. Harper has them in the eye. Now they go into the split backfield again. This time it is Harper keeping, pitching out on the corner. This is Rogers at the five and all the way down to the two-yard line. What power he has. Tried to get away from Bubba Brown. Did lurch for a couple of extra yards as Bubba caught up with him around the five. And Rogers came down hard on his shoulder, and I believe that's the shoulder that was injured earlier, and he is in pain out there right now. Oh, wait a minute. He might have a knee locked up or something. That leg is extended straight out in the air there. I have never seen his shoulder. Okay. He just is reacting from the pain of the yeah. shoulder, I guess. Boy, that leg was just locked right straight out there. And I thought for a moment that was the reason for concern. But he came down hard on that shoulder. You know, this is an amazing young man. How many yards did he need to go over 100 this afternoon? Oh, he needed. Or 1,000, uh, I mean. To, uh, he needed. 1,000. Uh, a hundred and one very many 117 likely could have gotten them out here today He's very close but you know he missed two full games with a shoulder injury <laughs> so this in fact is only his ninth game on the year and it is the shoulder but boy there is a, a true athlete who will be around South Carolina for two more years just a sophomore being aided from the field you've got to hope this young man is going to be able to uh, recover whether it takes surgery or not because you don't want to see a career like this interrupted. He's uh -huh. just, he's too fine an athlete, and it means too much to his team. In fact, they're not even taking him to the bench. They're taking him to the dressing room to say, take care of that young man. Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty and obvious. Clemson, Clemson pretty, people standing ovation. Pretty obvious that George Rogers is in pain as he gets a standing ovation from this crowd of 63,000-plus here at the Valley. What an afternoon he had. And it was through that great effort of his but he actually came up with the injury because it would have been just as easy for him to go down under the tackle of Bubba Brown back at the five, but he dove from his grasp and tried to get the extra yardage into the two. All right, it's third down and goal game, Cox. They're at the two-yard line of the Tigers. Gary Harper sets them in the, the three-yard line. Two-point conversion try. Harper is back to throw, looking, firing. It is incomplete. Flag down, interference. Intended receiver was the tight end, Willie Scott, Bubba Rollins, guilty of pass interference. That'll bring it to the one, and they'll try it again. Pretty good call. Yeah. Can't complain about the call at all. Yep. Bubba that time was around in front of the receiver, Scott. Of course, he was doing the job. He was knocking the ball away. He knew it was a sure two if he didn't get up there and grab. Why not? So it'll be... South Carolina with a two-point conversion try from the one now as Harper brings them out in the eye. Gary Harper moves them in a split backfield now. He goes back to throw once more, looking, firing. This one is incomplete. This time, no interference. They tried to get it off to Zion McKinney. So we have time out on the field with the score. Tigers 41, South Carolina 23. two-yard line in 11 plays, mostly on the running of the departed uh, George Rogers. The Gamecocks took it in, and now they trail 41-23 after an unsuccessful attempt at a two-point conversion. 
and uh, Rogers was not here to see it. He was already into the dressing room, was not around to see uh, the touchdown, but basically he helped set up. But now it's going to be kickoff time, and uh, as you said, Jim, the Tigers certainly expect the onsides. Well, they've got a lot of sure-handed people up on the front line. There, that's going to be a high chip shot. Jordan's going to let it uh, hit out of bounds at about the 23. Now the angle on it would make it a little further upfield, and the Tigers may elect to take it there. Let's see. It's safe in your hands there. Huh? I think it'll be smart to take it there because uh, you always stand the chance of them coming back and on siding it and perhaps getting possession. So why not take the football with pretty good field position? That's what they're going to do. They decline. The illegal procedure called against the Gamecocks and Clemson takes over the football right at their own 23 yard line. It was kind of strange too. It looked like he intended to kick the ball that way and maybe he kicked it too hard. I, I, don't I know. think he tried to get it along that sideline perhaps make Jordan try to field it from an awkward position and perhaps lose possession of it. So Clemson with the football right now at their own 23 yard line clock down to 636 remaining in the game Tigers on top 41 to 23. Steve Fuller at quarterback now takes out this time rides it off to Lester Brown cracks over left tackle out across the 25 to the 26 yard line and down he goes there. So a pickup of three it'll bring about second down and seven now for the Tigers as Tim Singleton and John D'Antonio were there defensively for South Carolina. Now we have timeout being asked it's an officials timeout for an injured Gamecock player with timeout on the field the score Clemson 41 South Carolina 23. Uh, Gamecock seems to be okay. They took him out for the rest of the play. Here come the Tigers back up the line of scrimmage. Jerry Butler comes wide to the right side. It's second down seven for the 26 yard line as Steve Fuller sets them in the eye. This time Lester Brown again gets only one as he has hit hard as he gets out to the 27 yard line. Fred Sinclair defensive tackle stepped up in the gap that time and brings Lester Brown down. Hey anybody thinks this game is over think again. Hey, it's interesting to note that uh, it previously uh, at, a, at a score like this at this time remaining the Tigers might have some uh, second teamers in there. Not now. It's all the first team. They're all trying hard. It's also an opportunity or a chance to get a little flat or perhaps a little conservative. Let's see what they do here on third. Fuller pitching out. Lester Brown gets out only to the 29 and down he goes again and the Tigers do not get the yardage for a first down and they'll have to kick it back to the Gamecocks with still 525 remaining in the game. David Sims on to do the punting. He hit a 71 yarder the last time he stepped out there. Horace Smith is backed up deep for South Carolina. Snap back. Gets the kickoff and he hit a bad one. I guess he was due a bad one after the 71 yarder but he shanked that one poorly. And let's see where it's going to be marked out of bounds. It will go out of bounds at the Tiger 42 yard line. A punt of only 13 yards. Reminiscent of the one he got off last year at Williams Bryce at a very crucial time. How about that? Two punts, one of 13 yards, and of the two, you average 42. That's how hard he hit the other one. <laughs> so South Carolina with excellent field position as Harper brings them out again in the eye. Dorsey and Spencer Clark back there. Harper keeps. He's across the 35. Down to the 33-yard line he goes where Steve Gibbs comes across defensively. It's a shootout here at the Valley this afternoon. The clock showing 4.53 remaining now. 41-23. Tigers hold the lead. You know, you got to know if, if Harper had had a, a year's experience to go along with everybody else, where would they be standing right now? Good quarterback. Horace Smith. Flank to the right side. Harper at quarterback sets them down. Split backfield. Takes out. This time is riding it off. That is Dorsey. Straight ahead and I believe has a first down as he's into the 31-yard line where Jim Stuckey and Bubba Brown come up defensively. 
But I'll show you what this football game is all about. The great tradition that's behind it, the rivalry between these two teams, South Carolina, which has trailed throughout, has continued to battle from behind and continue to hang in there and play tough football. That's the kind of rivalry this is. It's at the 31 of the Tigers. It is first and 10 Gamecocks. Harper again sets them down in the I formation. Takes out, drops to throw. Looking over the middle and firing. It is incomplete down at the 15-yard line. The intended receiver was Horace Smith, covered by Rex Barn, and the pass thrown a little short of the mark. Steve Fuller has been chosen the outstanding Clemson player in today's game, and George Rogers has been chosen the outstanding player for South Carolina. Each school will be awarded a scholarship for $1,000 in the name of these two outstanding uh, athletes by the South Carolina State Fair Association. Congratulations to Steve Fuller and to George Rogers. That's an award that began several years ago and a very worthwhile one from the State Fair Board. And two outstanding young men winning the honors for their respective schools. Here's Harper keeping. He's at the 25 to the 20. Finally caught from behind and down he goes at the 15-yard line as Steve Gibbs caught up with Gary Harper from behind. They've marked it to the 14-yard line. Another first down for the Gamecocks. 3.53 remaining in the football game. One of the Tigers coming over, injured on that play. Steve Gibbs it was, who was aided to the sidelines. Harper has them at the 14. They shift into a split backfield. This time the ride is off. That is Spencer Clark straight ahead down to the 10-yard line before Bubba Brown can wrap him up there. Rich Tootin, Eddie Gethers both checking back in for the Tigers now. It's at the 10 where it'll be second down, six yards to go. Out come the Gamecocks once again. Horace Smith wide to the right side. We have 3-10 remaining in the game. Harper at quarterback. Split backfield, rides it off. That is Dorsey over right tackle. He is stopped at about the seven or eight yard line by John Brooks. Jonathan Brooks came up defensively that time for the Tigers to make the play. Steve Gibbs is back in. Whatever his injury was, it was not severe. David Reed checks out. And now timeout asked by South Carolina. So with timeout on the field, 2.45 remaining in the game. The score here at the Valley comes from 41, South Carolina 23. to go in the ball game 41 23 Tigers out front Gamecocks with the ball and driving deep in Tiger territory Tigers have now won uh, eight straight games the longest Tiger winning streak without a tie since a nine game streak put together by uh, winning the last six games of the 50 season the first three games of the 51 campaign they've never won 10 of course Sign McKinney flanks wide to the right side Gary Harper has them in a split backfield. It's third down and three as Harper is back to throw. Rush on him, fires for the end zone. It is incomplete. Intended for Zion McKinney, Al Latimer defending for the Tigers. Well-thrown football, however, by Harper that time as he hung it up over the heads of the defenders. And Zion just lost it off his fingertips. He threw it where he had to throw it, and uh, it's kind of like a dog fight you used to see in the movies from the... Uh, Old war pictures of these two guys going for that ball out there. Ronald is fourth down and three yards to go now South Carolina. The ball to the Tiger 8-yard line. Wide to the right side goes John Bailey. Harper at quarterback. Sets them down. High formation. Shift into a spread backfield. This time Harper keeping. Does not get it. Good defensive play by John Brooks and Randy Scott. 
as they stop Harper at the eight yard line and the Tigers take over first and ten with two and a half minutes remaining in this football game. There comes that big defensive play that you have to have to stop a drive. Somewhere in a drive you've got to come up with a, not just a normal defensive play but an, an extra good defensive play and there's one of them right there. Marvin Sims and Lester Brown will be in the backfield along with Steve Fuller at quarterback. Now the fans here at the Valley begin to chant. We're number one. They're Tiger fans. Fuller at quarterback sets them down. Takes out. Gives off to Marvin Sims. He finds a hole up over the 15 to the 18 yard line goes Sims before he is pulled down by Rick Sanford. Boy what an afternoon Marvin Sims has had. You know he came to play a year ago in the South Carolina game. It's where he established himself at the fullback position for the Tigers. Up to then it had been Tracy Perry and Harold Goggins. And Marvin of course having an outstanding year sharing duties with Perry at fullback. Butler is wide to the right side on second and one Tigers. They're in the eye. Lester Brown gets the call. He's over the 20 out to the 23 yard line goes Lester. Tim Singleton brings him down there. That'll be enough for a Tiger first down. 15 seconds for station identification on the Clemson Football Network. down to a minute 45 remaining now as the Tigers have it first and 10 at their own 23 yard line Fuller takes out pitch back to Lester Brown he's over the 25 to the 30 and out of bounds he goes out around the 32 or 3 yard line Robert Perlot was there defensively for the Gamecocks stopping the clock with a minute 37 remaining you know they had a they had a man there really fight off Dulce on a block that was uh, Bridges to, to force Brown out of bounds. All right, Butler comes wide to the right side. Steve Fuller at quarterback, setting them down in the eye. Takes out, rides it off to Lester again. He's across the 35 to the 38 or 39 yard line before Tim Singleton can bring him down. Officially, it would appear that Lester Brown has gone over the 1,000 yard mark. The last to do it was Buddy Gore back in 1967, the last Tiger to go over 1,000. But Lester Brown gets a big hand from his teammate Warren Ratchford, who replaces him. Here's a junior with a thousand. Listen to this crowd. Indicative of the Tiger team, the first guy who grabbed him, hugged him to congratulate him was the guy he beat out for the position, Warren Senior Ratchford. Warren Ratchford. Yes. Well, I believe the Tigers are going to be charged with a delay of game here, and now Steve Fuller is going to ask for a timeout. Gets it. Coming back over to the sidelines. You know, that might be one of three persons on the field this afternoon to go over 1,000 yards. We don't have official stats on Rodgers and Wright, but they were both within distance. I would guess that Roger certainly did, and Wright's very, very close. And the Tigers probably got more mileage out of their fullback position this afternoon than they did the tailback exactly position. Exactly right. A minute, two seconds left in the game. Thompson with the football. And they have it at their own 38-yard line. They got timeout evidently before that flag went down for the delay of game. So they work from the huddle now. They're leading 41-23, about to wrap up their 10th victory on the season, their ninth consecutive win on the year. They lost on September the 23rd in Athens, Georgia. Since then, they've reeled off nine consecutive wins. They're headed for the Gator Bowl December 29th. And at last report, it looked as though they would be meeting Ohio State as Michigan led the Buckeyes 14 to 3. Here's Marvin Sims. Big afternoon for Marvin. Another junior. He's out to the 44. Neil Timmons defensively for South Carolina. Now, timeout again, stopping the clock, the Gamecocks. And with timeout on the field, the score Tigers 41, Gamecocks 23.
26 guys dressed in orange ending a career the last two years have been fantastic for them this has got to be the epitome of a young man's uh, joy to be a uh, part of not only a championship ball team but a ball team like this when Butler has just come out well they're bringing the seniors out yes. one by one Fuller came out a moment ago Butler's out it's a crowd applauding these young men Eric Young comes wide to the right side Billy Lott at quarterback up under center he goes Marvin Sims gets the call out to the 45 and that's all as down he goes 50 seconds left in the football game 41 23 Tigers have the lead and again timeout is asked we're going to keep it here Ken what an afternoon it's been what a season it's been look at that senior group come off the field and listen to this crowd five or six of them coming off it one bite there the victory sign as they come off Sims came off and went back on Marvin going to check back in and coming out is Paul Williams who had moved in there at fullback Eric Young is wide to the right side Billy Lott at quarterback clock shows 48 seconds remaining as Lott moves up under center Long count takes out this time keeping Lott turns it up gets over the 45 to about the 48 and Billy just wouldn't go down as Tim Singleton finally wrestles him down at the 48 yard line clock now down to 39 seconds and again South Carolina stops it with a timeout but going back to the previous remarks Ken it's just been one of those you know the slogan this year was Saturday afternoon fever and certainly that's what it became here at the Valley and all other places the Tigers touched for one loss at the hands of Georgia's Bulldogs in Athens but the Tigers felt when they came out of that football game that mistakes had in fact cost them the game oh yes absolutely Here's J.D. Haglund, a senior. He's going to go in now as a flanker. J.D., who was sharing the flanker duties early in the season, has been quite an asset to the specialty teams here at Clemson. First and ten Tigers as Lott got that first down. This time, riding it off again to his fullback Sims across the 50 into Gamecock territory, down to 13 seconds remaining. Carolina's used all of their timeouts and the clock will run out now. Five seconds. Let the crowd count it down. The Tigers have collected their 10th win on the season. They have won the state championship. They are the ACC champions. They're headed to the Gator Bowl. You talk about Saturday afternoon fever. That's what's before us on the field. What a colorful sight as there are hundreds and thousands of fans spilling out to greet their heroes. And this football game is now history. The regular season is now history. And what a football game it was. And we'll be back to talk about it shortly. But the final score here this afternoon was Clemson 41, South Carolina 23.